Okay, we're recording, and we're almost at battery, so we don't know how long this video is gonna last. Um, cheers. Cheers. Good morning, John. Good morning, Hank. It's, is this your video or mine? Because it's my camera. It's my video, but you're gonna mm. edit it. And then upload it on Friday? No, no, no. I don't love this. This is gonna be the first ever, we're drinking Tinglings. Which is ting and rum. Yeah. And so, ting, ting is like grapefruit soda from Jamaica. Yeah, which is where we are. We're in Jamaica on vacation, and we were thinking, what's the most radical, countercultural thing that two content creators could do in 2023? And that was to go on vacation and not make content about it. Yeah, we haven't made a single TikTok. I took four pictures, and they're all of cats. One, two, yeah. three, four. There they are. Which is... <laughs> hey, who's editing this? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, I thought we were taking it down in Auction 2023. Now you're going to make me put pictures of cats in the video? Yeah, I'll DM them to you. All right, I'll put a picture of, like, what the ocean looks like, which I think is even bigger news than cats. They're really good cats. Yeah, H Hank and Catherine will look away from a beautiful sunset across the Jamaican yeah. horizon to be like, look at the kitty. No apologies. It's great. Um, we've had an awesome time. This is, but yeah, we have not collabed at all. We've not made any content. Instead, we've been making a different kind of content called life. Yeah, well, I'm try well, also just trying to, it's inter It's perspective making. And also, perspective -making. I just really like John and Sarah. Yeah. And so does Catherine. It's and been a good hang session. just had a lot of fun hanging out. Yeah, that's one of the things that surprises me sometimes is that we don't fake it for the camera. Uh, we right. genuinely get along. It's so fun. We've had like two fights since we became professional partners. <laughs> you, a lot of them have been forgotten over the years, I think. I guess we had a fight like two weeks ago, but it was just you were being so annoying. I wasn't even like you mad were, at you about you anything. Were, you hadn't slept in like 48 hours. Is that, I'm going to put that on a little bit on you or the situation. I felt like you were being a little annoying. Earlier but I was this really trip, tired. John bet Sarah a million dollars that this couch swung like a yeah. like a little like a fun outdoor swing. I, I asked it her doesn't. I asked her if she wanted to bet a million dollars and she said no because I was so confident. You seemed very confident. And that's part of my trick. It does not swing as mm -hmm. it turns out. It's a stationary outside bed, but it's still pretty nice. Yeah. This we have now been going for two minutes and fifty two seconds. Yeah. And this battery light is blinking red. I mean, it's this is exciting for the viewer and for us, except I'm, they actually know when the video yeah, is going to end. Yeah. You should probably just say, Hank, I'll see you on Friday, just in case. Hank, I'll see you on Friday. Okay, we'll keep going, though. Okay. Until All right. Well, now, happens. I thought this was going to be a no-cut video, and you've now been making me do the end in the middle and the no, middle in the end. No, you could just end. If it doesn't make it, you just cut there, and that's the end. Okay. Yeah. All right. I feel like I'm going to have to put at least three cuts in this thing. I'm definitely and four cats <laughs> and some ocean. Definitely cats are important. The project for Awesome starts on Friday. We're extremely excited about that. Part of the reason we've been on vacation is to center mm. ourselves. Get ready. Calm. Mm -hmm. Come to the project for Awesome from a place of lots of energy because it both takes energy and gives it. Yeah, uh, so it, sure. it's going to be intense. 48 hour live stream extravaganza starts noon on Friday. You missed it. What did I miss? It's four minutes and one second now. Oh, I, we're already going to have to do cuts. Okay. I thought you were really going to try to do a no cut spectacular. Well, you, you once I've got to put in a picture of a cat, Hank, I might as well just spend four hours editing a YouTube video. <laughs> you know what? Cancel the vacation. Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. And Would you like a chippy buddy? Oh, he made a chippy buddy, y'all. He really did it. Chippy buddy, chippy buddy. It's not chippy buddy. It's just chip buddy. But it feels like it should be chippy buddy. It's just mayonnaise, <laughs> bread. You didn't have any brown sauce, so I put fish sauce on it. Oh. Oh. God, that looks awful. It's just carb on carb on carb. It needs more mayonnaise. What do you think of platypuses? I think that they're fantastic. For me, it's a take it or leave it thing. Like if you could kill the last platypus. No, Hank, of course I would not kill it. <laughs> it's just like walking slowly toward a garbage disposal. And, and I... you can either save it or not. <laughs> It's and you're like, like ah, dig it or leave it. It's like the trolley problem, but if you flip the switch, <laughs> nothing bad happens. Can't believe you're still eating it. I can't believe it's still happening. There was a hair. Can I identify whose it is? That's that's Sarah's. Hank, do you believe what doesn't kill you makes you stronger? Um, no. No. I think it can go either way. 
Yeah, sometimes things that don't kill you make you stronger, like yeah. exercise. <laughs> I think it's really uh, person to person, situation to situation. I don't know about you, but lots of bad things have happened to me that didn't make me stronger at all. Like labyrinthitis, <laughs> like <it's laughs> just made my life worse for a while. No, still like oh, a little right, bit right. worse. I was thinking of cellulitis. Sorry, oh, had a lot of diseases. I've had a lot of itises. I'm heavy on the itis. Heavy on the itis is going to be the name of your memoir, man. That's great. <laughs> Hank, what are your thoughts on the upcoming F1 season? I think that I think that is a car thing. Oh, that's impressive. I didn't think you would know that. <laughs> In my head, here's what I have. Mm -hmm. Somewhat dependent on Russian oligarchs? To be fair, it relies on dirty money from all over oh, the I world. See. Gotcha. Have you ever heard of the oh. following names? Lewis Hamilton. I knew a guy named Lewis who was actually from a town called Hamilton. He was like a biking advocate. And indeed, Lewis Hamilton also enjoys... Transport. Wheeled <laughs> transportation. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Max Verstappen? Max Verstappen, though, like, unlike that other guy, sounds like an F1 driver. He does. I'm just saying, if I heard his name, Max Verstappen or whatever, like, I'm like, yeah, that guy sounds like an F1 driver. All right. It's like the guy um, who operated on my hand when I got my tendon. Yes. Was named Dr. Hand. I had a doctor, an anesthesiologist. Uh -huh. named, Dr. Sleepy. Named Dr. House. Oh, wow. Like House MD. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, putting the anesthesia in and he says i'm dr house or whatever and i'm like hey do you know that there's also a d uh <laughs> and i assume that's why he became an anesthesiologist like, so I don't he doesn't have to have that joke over and over and over again you know he's like the i that's uh, the other anesthesiologists have you count back from 10 i yeah. have you tell me that you've seen a show called house <laughs> Oh, please don't. You just got it near my face on purpose. I would really wish Vlogbrothers had smell of vision so that everybody could be in the boat I'm in right now. They're good chips. Yeah, yeah, no, they're really good. They're from a, they're from a, <laughs> they're local french fries. <laughs> Hank, what are some things that you do when you don't feel inspired? Read. Mm. Always helps. Mm. Though it's hard to make myself do it. What I do is I yell at myself and I say like, mm. you idiot, get to work! And that is totally ineffective, but yeah, I've, uh, but like I've been works. doing it for 40 years, so it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to break the habit. <laughs> we have to make a lot of stuff, and I regularly am like, it's Thursday, I need to make a video, I don't know what I'm gonna make my video about. And having gone from the place of, I think this is a disaster, and it's not going to happen, to the next day there is a video and it's good. I've had it happen enough times that it yeah. doesn't freak me out as much as it used to. I'm sorry that you didn't get shiny my chippy butt. You keep making the name of it worse. The name was terrible <laughs> to start, and it just gets worse. I'm glad that we have a lot of British fans <laughs> who can feel uh, insulted. I'm a big believer in cultural humility, but that is a bad sandwich. <laughs> Hank, I will continue to see you right now. I'm gonna go hang out with your son. Good morning, John. What? Why am I here? Why? Not a dance. No dancing. Oh, God. No. Just FYI, I set your chair a little low. <laughs> Is that on purpose? That joke never gets did old you? to me. Did you? <laughs> I did. I did. I have no idea. Oh, no! We're in the same place at the same time because it's our uh, mother's birthday. And she loves that we're spending time... Just as brothers. And our spouse's favorite thing mm -hmm. when we sneak away. <laughs> We're going to make a video and play some Spider-Man video games. Hank, I know that you've asked the people of Twitter for some questions for I me. Did, did, did they deliver? John? Yes. Have you read any fanfic of your own books? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of Isaac-related Fault in Our oh, Stars fanfiction, which is fun. Yeah. There's even some people who wrote versions of the fanfiction that Daisy writes oh, in yeah, Turtles yeah, yeah, All the yeah, Way yeah, Down. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. By the way, Hank, have I told you that Turtles All the Way Down is actually going to be a movie? Yeah. Have. Like, not fun, not for fun, but for real? I think you're about to go have a conversation with someone about it. The star of Turtles All the Way Down, Isabella Merced, whose face is currently covering Hank's face. You're gonna is do this some my motion. Video? Gonna, it's your oh, video, no! but you've got to. You still got to do that. What happens when the sun dies? Well, I don't know what happens when the sun dies, but I, I do believe that the people who love us will miss us. My favorite Keanu Reeves really, line. Yeah, that's what happens after you die. And that's what happens when the, the sun dies. No, it's not. How do you keep learning things after school stops? I mean. Crash course? Yeah, use crash course. This one, it's definitely a way. That's one way. But in general, don't you think it's about pursuing inquiry and understanding about, how to? It's about being curious and knowing how to chase the curiosity, knowing how to chase yes. the question. That learning of how to ask the question around the question is kind of best done by reading nonfiction. I always sort of have a block and I'm like, I don't want to read a big old book about that. And then I do and I'm like, I have so many questions. No, it was so actually was so interesting. It. That's my relationship with science books, books of medical history, history books. Mm -hmm. I just get so yeah. 
thrilled by to them. me learning is about getting in touch with that part of you and then being having the time and the space mm -hmm. and the the skill set to pursue that curiosity what's your favorite like thinky podcast where you like learn stuff you didn't know before <laughs> the anthropocene reviewed oh my god you literally knew everything in that podcast it's the only <laughs> podcast I, where you knew everything. not when i started i love 99 percent invisible i feel yeah. like i learned so much from it i learned so much from radio lab from invisibilia there's a wonderful podcast through line I that i learn a lot line. from little saint james wants to know do you have any Elden Ring strength build PvP strategies? I don't, I don't know what any of those say, words mean. Why do I get shocked by metal all the time in Vegas? Why does that happen? There's no air in the water. There's no water in the air. There is no air in the water. It's a huge problem. There's... Only fish have solved it. <laughs> is that why when the air is drier you get shocked more? Is that why you get yeah. shocked in winter because the air is dry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Do you remember when I started a YouTube channel called All the Questions? Yes. And the goal was yes. to answer, answer every, every question. question. Yeah. Yeah. You never think small. I was like, we can just record them 50 at a time. Yeah. You've got to give an explanation because nah, you've got to nah, get nah. watch time. You do it like the pronunciation guide where you like have the video start and then like 15, 30 seconds <laughs> in, you're like, horrors dustis. There's an app <laughs> called How Jay Say. Oh, I know How Jay Say. My favorite thing is that he said everything. He yeah, didn't he... like, just because people know how to pronounce it doesn't mean he hasn't said it. Right. So he's just up in here. <laughs> Good old Jay. I was dancing. Butlamine. <laughs> There's not a lot of words that start with but. Butty, also in the UK, butty. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. What? Butty! Oh, in the UK, what is that word? Hank, it's a sandwich that contains nothing but bread and french fries. <laughs> so a chip buddy is a particular kind of buddy, and any kind of disgusting buttered sandwich is a buddy. We actually have french fries upstairs. We do. We're gonna We're go. We're gonna go get a chippy buddy. John, I'll see you on Tuesday. And see right you now. now. Good morning, John. It's the last reunion video. <laughs> it's question Tuesday. We answer real questions from real nerd We're gonna get right to it. It's the YouTube edition. John. Yeah. Who was your favorite OG YouTuber back in the real early days? Mm, community channel, Natalie Tran. Natalie Tran. My 2006 favorite was probably Lonely Girl 15. Yeah, my 2006 favorite probably like. The wine cone. Oh, I loved the wine cone. And oh, Zay Frank, of course. When did you realize this was going to be your job? It's still not my job. I don't get paid <laughs> to do this. So, uh, <laughs> Nep, careers on YouTube tend to be very short. Like, Hank and I have been on YouTube for 15 years now, and so we've seen how yeah. really, really good careers cannot last very long. And the people who stick around tend to be people who reinvent themselves a, a lot. Uh, and which we don't do! And us. <laughs> Sam asks, what do you think are the best and worst uh, site functionality changes YouTube has made over its existence? Well, in 2007, the site didn't work. And people yeah. forget about this, but like... <laughs> The site works now. Yeah. It's the, very impressive. The player is very good. Player's excellent. People forget how good the player is. So good. There are a lot of secret hotkeys. Yeah. And that's my favorite UX thing where like, yeah. if you know, you can do a bunch of things. You can so. go back a frame or you can go back can 10 go seconds. Back frames. In terms of my least favorite feature, uh -huh. I think it was better yeah. when it was a five star system. Wow. Well, because then they went to likes and dislikes, and now they got rid of dislikes. I think five stars was the best. Yeah. But I'm old, so of course I think that. And also I wrote you a book write a about book. the five star scale. Was there any time, Jason asks, uh, during Brotherhood 2.0 that you wanted to stop? Yes, like in March, where it mm. still felt like a really long project. But it, the hard part for me is always imagining the future. That gets really overwhelming. Right. In the present... It was always fun. Um, Jeremiah asks, when is the next X Jokes in Four Minutes coming? That's where the first minute of Dear Hank and John is for. Yes. That's where I do that now. Jessica asks, who got the play button for Vlogbrothers, or do you take turns? And I do not know the answer to this question. I don't know question. where it is. <laughs> I just I looked in the background it. to see if I have it. I don't think I do. I think it's on the wall at Complexly. Okay. Missoula. I remember, I was on a plane when we hit one million subscribers, yeah. and I remember... The feeling, uh -huh. it was incredible. Mm -hmm. And now I never think about it. Who is your oldest YouTuber friend? Hank. Oh, uh, that, yes. I feel like Hank and I are really lucky that we have each other because if we didn't, I wouldn't have a peer. And now I have a colleague. It's very hard to do this on your own. Who understands yeah. what it's like 
from the inside. Uh, Robin says, I miss video responses. Do you miss video responses? I miss them now way more than I miss them when they actually got rid of them. Because right. I feel like they would do better now. Some people forget this, but like video responses were widely misused. Yeah. It's really uh, easy to forget how much we know about those days of YouTube. Thanks for chatting about it with me a little bit. It's been fun. It's been fun, mostly. I had a good time. I thought you meant the entire 15 years. Oh, no, no, I meant the last 12 minutes. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who's been through even a little bit of it with us. And John, I'll see you on Tuesday. Good morning, Hank. I'm it's still here. He's still here. So Hank and I had an idea, which was to look at our tweets from 2011. But because I'm smart, I deleted all my tweets from 2011 <laughs> a long time ago. But instead, I guess what we're going to do is just look at what I tweeted 10 years ago. Yeah. So these are Hank's piping hot, frozen cold, 10-year-old <laughs> takes. Here we go. Thank you, Portland, for an amazing night. I may never wear shoes again. Oh, there's going to be a lot that I do not have any idea where they came from. Well, I'll tell you what. The people loved it. It got nine likes. <laughs> this is another tweet that reflects the sort of 2011 aesthetic of a quasi-stream-of-consciousness Twitter feed. Who the hell got potatoes all over my phone? I have to assume it was me. I am stuck inside of around 20 t-shirts. I literally cannot get out of them by myself. The initial panic has subsided. I now accept my fate. I remember this. Yeah. I remember that very specifically. Yeah, that was a Vlogbrothers video. Uh huh. Yeah. There's a lot of shirts. You put yourself inside of 20 t shirts, try to like break a Guinness World Record or I something know, silly. No, it wasn't even close. So it's just like a challenge. I was not able to get out of them by myself. This is a good one, even though it only got three likes. <laughs> just did some official counting $993 to keep it, $879 to shave it. Uh oh, keep it made a comeback. Oh, God. Like this. This huge, a, huge mistake. Huge mistake. Huge mistake. It it's had, had a, a very large effect. Yes. And you still have to deal with the after effect. Yeah, which is that the first episodes of SciShow and Crash Course were both filmed with a goatee. You know what? Let's bring it up. There it is. <laughs> Goodness gracious. How did it happen? Why did it, why was it allowed to go on? Uh, why did people donate for that to remain? Well, the thing is, I tweeted that Shave It was winning. Yeah. And that no, was the mistake. mistake. Big mistake. Tiffio's cover fact, John's name is now as big as the title, which means that he's kind of a big deal. When did that book come out? It came out in January of 2012. This was October of 2011. Oh, so I had just seen the cover for the first time. Yeah, and I actually, as I remember it, there was so much negative response to the cover. Yeah. You were trying to find That's a positive right. yeah. spin People on the cover. People did not like it. People did not like the cover. It turned out that the cover did pretty well. <laughs> turned out it was a good cover. All right, Hank, we have here a tweet uh, about Hank Green, the celeb chaser. Is there anybody nearby who could potentially get me in touch with Skrillex? <laughs> 14 likes. <laughs> Why did I want to talk to Skrillex? Next, next tweet. <laughs> Catherine and I just broke into someone's house. Then we took their dogs for a walk. Does everybody else like the Every Day I'm Shuffling song as much as I do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was like a, a little ironic because it was big already or if it wasn't big already. And I was like on the, on the, like catching the... Catching the wave. wave. Wow, that's a true snapshot. Sometimes I re-realize that the way we communicate with each other in the world is being revolutionized, and it is exciting. <sighs> Which it was in and 2011. And it's still exciting. Back then it was exciting in the way that you feel when you're going up a roller coaster. Yeah. And now it is exciting in the way that you feel when you're going down the roller coaster, but you're actually going further down than you went up, and you're like, like wait, oh, how this is far... Not how far down does this go? This tweet only got 15 likes, but I really love it. From the research I have done, I am willing to assert that there is no abominable snowman. I think he's totally abominable. <laughs> I'm actually going to retweet it right now. <laughs> Hank, I will continue to see you right now. All right. Every day I'm shuffling one. <laughs> I want to retweet that. Nobody laughs at their own jokes like Hank Green. Good morning, John. It is Friday. <laughs> Hank. That was very good. I'm about to fall. I can do Use this all core. day. Use your core.
So, John, you uh, have been talking to me about Crown Hill Cemetery for a long time, highest point in Indianapolis. America's greatest cemetery. The most vice presidents per square mile anywhere in the U.S. It's true. As long as you count dead ones. So, so here's what we decided to do. I was like, let's go epitaph hunting. Yeah. And then we will reconvene and share the best epitaph. And if you have the money to spare a few extra words onto your tombstone, I think it adds a lot. Yeah. Even just one. Bananas. I want to start with this guy here, Hank. Stan Mollis. He died in 2012, and his uh, tombstone is a tennis net, and it says "Game Set Match." Because uh, that's when it's over. That's when. That's when it's over. all over. Is he a tennis player? He was not only a tennis. He was a professional tennis player. He owned the magnet company that designed magnets for the Apollo mission tennis that were instrumental magnets. to the uh, Apollo mission mooning. Oh, to a, moon, to a moon arrival. To America's mooning. Yes, Hank, I'm sure you recall Neil Armstrong's first words <laughs> upon landing on the moon. Yeah. I am mooning! Let us moon! <laughs> we did it, Buzz! We're mooning! What is that? Is he's, that your... Are you mooning? Yeah, he's mooning. Now, what is your understanding of the verb to moon? Walk upon the moon. Oh, okay. This one was weird. Laughter is the best medicine. Why are you on this planet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's very funny. And it's like, I don't know, man. Great question. <laughs> I found a similarly inscrutable one. The sober one is currently on tour. You will always remain in our hearts forever. The, the sober first, one is currently on tour. The first part sounds like an artificial intelligence is writing <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> John, this one on the back in quotation marks just says, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. While we're talking about ones that are lovely. He filled his niche and accomplished his task. He left the world better than he found it. That's nice. I think it's lovely. We've talked about good ones. I think we should talk about some bad ones. Uh -huh. Beginning with this guy, Ebenezer Dumont. My criticism is that he's obviously a very accomplished person. He has listed way too many accomplishments. The font gets too small, and so you end up, you can't even read all the things that, that he did. You've got to pick a couple things. Like Benjamin Harrison, who was president of the United States, picked a couple of things. Yeah. It says lawyer and publicist, which it turns out meant something different then. Yeah, it seems like a weird thing to pick out. Like, I was a lawyer, and also I helped people get into <laughs> Us Weekly. <laughs> Back then it meant, like, uh, a, a person concerned with or expert in right. issues of the public. Ah. I am very fond of the idea that even the things we etch in stone are not necessarily Absolutely. etched in stone. I liked this one. To live in the hearts of others is not to die. Mm. These days, mausoleums cost, like, what houses cost. They don't do them anymore. Very rarely. The last one was the Bane one. Oh my god, the Bane one. Can we talk about it? It's on the hill where the fancy people are buried. It's a very normal looking mausoleum. Uh -huh. It's got a, a nice little walk, oh, it's got a walkway it's a up to it. a lot of it. space. A lot of space. It's open. It's very neoclassical. Mm -hmm. And I've always just walked past it and thought, like, that's a mausoleum. Hank Green, ever curious, walks up to the edge of the mausoleum. And what is inside is... Truly astonishing. I'm sorry that I couldn't get better footage of it than this. I And more power to him. Like, yes. just oh, add, add the whimsy. Yeah, I mean, it's <clears throat> such an odd place because, of course, it is very somber. Yeah. And there is a lot of sadness there. But there is also room for that. Thank you for taking me there. Thank you for showing me around. You are becoming a legitimate tour guide of Crown Hill. Um, well, now Maybe that that'll I'm... be your job <laughs> eventually. Oh, gosh, someday. John, I'll see you now. Bye. Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. Good morning. John. He's here. It's a reunion spectacular. Mm. Oh, I feel like you're getting stronger as you Ooh. get older. Uh, God, well, thanks. I feel like there's some, well, <laughs> Hank, if you had a chance to rename Twitter, what would you name it? Here's the brand. Okay. Careful! Exclamation point. Careful. Careful. Careful! What are your go-to 2021 holiday gifts? A nice towel. Yeah, a good towel is great. You know what I would recommend? Signed copies of the Anthropocene Reviewed book, <laughs> which are available with a special zine written by me that contains an all-new review and, and also written by lots of other people at mm -hmm. dftba.com. Link in the doobly-doo. All proceeds go to charity. I want to move the camera further away from us so that we are both in frame. What is the thing about yourself that you dislike the most? Let's switch it around. What is the thing about the other person that you dislike the most. What's one of the ones that people say in interviews? I think John cares too much. Yeah. I think he just cares too much yes. and he works 
too passionately. Yes. I would say that both Hank and I are a little much. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have spent a lot of time wondering, like, what the inside of your head is like. Mm -hmm. over the years because you're the person I've known the longest. <clears throat> it's funny to realize that the inside of heads are very different. Even the Which... other day you tweeted that like you don't feel guilty for your thoughts. Mm -hmm. You sent me a follow-up text to try to like explain. I was worried. Yeah, yeah, you were like, I don't want you to think that I'm like a bad person. And I was like, no, I don't think you're a bad person. I think you're enlightened. You can have a thought and understand that it's just a thought, that a thought is yeah. not an action. Right, and I would be totally embarrassed if people knew about the thought. But they don't. Yeah. You understand that they don't. Just like an ocean. It's an ocean of thoughts. Yeah, but then you pick up one little drop of water and you're like, oh, this thought is very dangerous and weird and I don't like it and so I'm going to keep thinking about it and then there are, now there are two drops of water and now there yeah. are four and now there are 16 and now there are 32 and etc. I do that but with uh, sock sales techniques. <laughs> Serious question, not related to Question Tuesday. <laughs> Do you think you can take your talent for selling socks, which I would argue is genuinely unparalleled, <laughs> and apply it to coffee? It's a different challenge. Can you do it, Hank? But I bet I could. I love that self-belief. Uh, I had a great book sales idea, John. Great. Well, what for was when, it? For like when, when Anthropocene Reviewed is whitelisted or whatever. Whitelisted. White labeled. White labeled. When the publisher is like, we have too many of these. When it is remaindered. My idea is to, instead of signing them, yeah. um, sign $2 bills and call it a $2 discount. Oh, that's good. <laughs> One time I was at a book sorting facility uh -huh. and they were like, there's a copy of your book, Paper Towns. Here's the machine where through an algorithm or whatever, it either gets kicked into this row and goes back to the warehouse or it goes down uh, this chute to be pulped in a machine that like looks like a, the garbage compactor from Star Wars. I wonder what's gonna happen with your book, Paper Towns. You watched it? I watched it get kicked on to the conveyor belt and, and like, then- Ugh! And then chomped. Were they like, that's normal and yeah, fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they were like, that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> Hank, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, um, I think an author. I would love I that. I can't guarantee that, though. Because I, I don't know if I can write a book. I know I can write two specific books. Yeah. I know I can write the books I've already written. I always thought that once you write a book, you know how to do it. You don't. I know as little about how to write the book that I am currently writing as I knew about how to write Looking for Alaska 15 years ago. Yeah, it's so different. Or actually, 18 years ago. <laughs> oh God, we have to go. Hank, I'll continue to see you right now. Shit. You're fine. You're doing great. We're all gonna die. Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. Oh, look, it's Hank's book, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing, which he wants you to know is available at fine bookstores everywhere. Has been since 2018. Hank, today we're doing something called Mind Blowers with Hank and John, where we share with each other the most mind-blowing facts that we know. Oh, okay. Okay, Hank, here's my first fact. Pi calculated to the 38th digit uh -huh. is precise enough to calculate, uh, assuming that we knew all the other numbers, the size of the Milky Way galaxy to within a few centimeters. So, like, we only need to know pi yeah. to the 38th digit, but we know pi to the 31 trillionth digit. <laughs> That's not a fact about pi, it's a fact about humans. We're amazing! Yeah. I can't get enough of us. <laughs> I read a few years ago that there are probably fragments of dinosaur bone on the moon. The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs probably shed debris as far as Jupiter. Another great mind-blowing fact is that uh, some science communicators figured out that bananas were a really good system for the scale of radiation. How so? They have a little bit of radiation in them, and so like eating one banana exposes you to some radiation. So. You want to know how much radi radiation you get like flying in a jet airplane to Europe? It's you can do it in bananas. Now I'm going to have to Google how many bananas an airplane flight is to find out if it was worth it to come here to visit you. <laughs> Here's a mind blower that Hank taught me. Before the Big Bang is an incorrect idea <laughs> because in addition to creating space as we now understand it, the Big mm. Bang created time as we currently understand it? Yeah, no, absolutely. To me, the mind blowing fact is that you can look up into the sky with a telescope and see the Big Bang. Here's a great one. Okay. I, Henry Reich told me this. If the universe were infinitely big and infinitely old, the, the night sky would be white. Why? Because there would be light from all of the stars in every direction. There would be no space not taken up by stars because the universe would be infinitely big and infinitely old. 
<laughs> okay, Hank, here's one that gets me. For 99.99% of human history, you could only hear music if you were within earshot of someone who was making it. Yes. And the idea of an album of recorded music is younger than Dr. Pepper. <laughs> we do not know why there is matter. What? And we do not know... Like, in two different ways. One, we don't know why there wasn't an equal amount of antimatter and matter created, and so everything annihilated itself. Like, at the Big Bang, it just, like, should have been, like, even Swoop. Steven. Yeah. It big bangs, and then it big smoops. Well, and then just, like, it can, like space and time continue to bang, but matter does not. According to our understanding of the universe, a universe without matter is is just as likely, if not more likely, than a universe with matter. And then, like, separately from that, we don't know why matter exists at all. So we don't really know why I'm here. Oh, definitely not. Okay. Well, like, like on way more levels than just those two. Right, like, we don't know why I'm here in the sense that, like, we don't know why the atoms that are inside of me exist. Yeah. yeah. It'd be interesting to look at what makes a fact mind-blowing. I think it's when it makes me feel either big or small, when it recontextualizes yeah. my understanding of myself uh -huh. and my place in the universe. Yeah. Like, I want to understand my own emotions, because ultimately... I am the most interesting part of the universe. I would argue that I am. <laughs> it's weird. Do you not do you not wake up in the morning and your first thought is of me and my needs? Some days when it's a really bad day. Yeah. I do think. Mm -hmm. Well, we are on a little infinitely tiny speck. Yeah. On the one hand, it's that feeling of wonderful smallness where which you would think would be sad but isn't. But then on the other hand, there's the feeling of like, well, there might not have been matter. So in that sense, I am quite something. This whole thing is weird. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> Hank, I'll continue to see you right now. Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. I missed you so much that I green screened myself into your background. Just kidding! Ah! I don't like when you do the thing where you put your chair up slightly higher than mine so you appear taller. Lower? Lower? There we go. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Question Tuesday. What is your favorite TikTok sound? You can really dance. Wow, you can really dance. Sarah told me actually she had a dream last night that you and I were trying to make a TikTok to the wow, you can really dance <laughs> oh, no. sound while they were like trying to like get us to leave to like go do family stuff. <laughs> what is your favorite essay in the Anthropocene Reviewed book? The first one that got me that made me cry was the, 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 the was it, is it the first one in the book, the Liverpool one? Yeah, You'll Never Walk Alone. Man, it must be so, like, enjoyable to uncover that, like, there is a depth there. Oh, yeah. That even the people who really enjoy it don't know about. The thing about nonfiction that I prefer to fiction is that in fiction, the things that happen have to make sense. <laughs> and in nonfiction... <laughs> has to, the, like, fit the theme. Yeah, yeah. The, in nonfiction, the things can just be true. And in the case of You'll Never Walk Alone, the true story of the song it's is so, so phenomenally weird. good. What would Hank and John from 10 years ago say if you could time travel and tell them everything? <laughs> I think myself from 10 years ago would be like, oh, that sounds cool. That's awesome. That's, yeah. that ooh. sounds, that's a little scary. That sounds, that, ooh, that, 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 and then, too, and too then, many slices. <laughs> too many that's slices. That's enough slices. I, I don't need another slice. <laughs> that's, that's what they would say. Yeah. How about you? I think I'd say, what is Doge? <laughs> and why do you want me to buy it and then sell it? And, and then, then buy it again and, and, and then, then sell it again. At a very specific schedule. Yeah. How do peppers work? Which kind? It, I Hank, I don't ask the questions here. <laughs> oh, is the less ripe ones green and the most ripe ones red? Oh no, no. It's, there are different it's just, varieties, different kinds of peppers. Yeah. Would you rather have mint flavored gum or fruit flavored gum? Mint. Yeah. First off, fruit flavored gum does not taste like any fruit. It tastes like you described fruit to an artificial intelligence that then ran a thousand simulations of what fruit might taste like uh -huh. and then was like, here's some fruit flavored gum. Hank, what's going on with the Crash Course Coins? So yesterday we just launched this new project, the Crash Course Coins. Uh, yeah, I have the, I have them here in my hand. Cut I'll, to a close up. Cut to close ups. Crash Course reaches like seventy million students a year, and we are looking to continue to be able to do that. There's a one hundred dollar one that will allow us to reach two thousand learners, and a five hundred dollar one that will allow us to reach ten thousand learners. 
We're only making 500 of those. What kind of inconsequential brotherly arguments do you get into? Hank acted as if I stole money from his trophies, which he did. He would he would roll up the money into his trophies, and then I would steal it. I would definitely steal it, and I bought I, all so kinds I, of things. So you're I'm saying most... you're saying that I acted as if a thing that happened happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you didn't contextualize it properly. I used most of the money to buy baseball cards, which you sold without my permission when we were in college. And, and... I believe I believe you. I can't. I and like it does seem like a thing you sold... where I would have convinced myself that that's okay. My baseball card collection on eBay. It was. So, I learned so much about business and commerce. It was yeah. very valuable lessons. You used those that lessons I then paid to, to found DFTBA.com. <laughs> right. I'm sure. You, I'm sure if you hadn't sold my baseball card collection uh, yeah, on eBay, it. you never would have known how e-commerce works. <laughs> Did you get emotional when you saw each other in person? Yes. During the pandemic, I have like struggled to feel emotion when the thing is happening. Yeah. And I kind of let myself very overwhelming. feel it later. Yeah. Thanks for coming to our video, Hank. I will continue to see you now. Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. Good morning, John. <laughs> That's really not my best work. We very nearly had actual brothers on a hotel bed. Hank, it's Question Tuesday, the day that we answer real questions from real nerd fighters, and you are going to have to figure out the theme of oh, today's I like question. I didn't look. Okay. What, in your opinion, is the most beautiful word? I like penumbra. For me, it's ongoingness. I don't like twelfth. That's a hard one. Twelfth. What was the most foolish thing you did as a child? I remember getting in a lot of trouble for throwing glass bottles off of our fort. Hank, what do you think is the most beautiful phenomenon in the Anthropocene? I bet there's a couple colors that didn't exist until we came around that are pretty good. I was gonna say the understanding of the speed of light. That's good too. Hank, what is your all-time favorite foolish endeavor? I have an answer for this. My all-time favorite foolish endeavor is a guy named Tony Hawks hitchhiked around the circumference of Ireland with a refrigerator to win a bet. And the book <laughs> that resulted is as amazing as you would hope. That's a good foolish endeavor. It is. Um, I was just gonna say all of humanity. Have you gotten the theme of the video yet? N no, I didn't yet. I didn't get the- Are you serious? I know. You seriously don't have the theme of the video? No. Okay. I wasn't paying a ton of attention. What was it? Favorite word? And then there was like, stupidest thing you done? Mm-hmm. I think everybody out there has the theme. <laughs> this might get you to the theme. Okay. What is foolish? Oh, okay. <laughs> I got it. Okay, <laughs> finally! <laughs> what is foolish, but also beautiful? The, the internet. internet. And also humanity. Human what? Yeah. And porcupines. We were like in a lockstep. Yeah. The internet, humanity, humanity, porcupines. I didn't have that no. one. I was They're gonna so go beautiful. I, I was gonna go like jalapeno poppers. What is the best advice you ever got from your kid? Sometimes Oren will say, "Feel happy." That's good. That's helpful. <laughs> one time, one of my kids said, "It's just YouTube." Are there any old school nerd fighterisms that have made their way into your everyday language? In the very first Vlong Brothers video ever, <laughs> the camera turns off and yeah. you say, Auto power off. Why the f still some glitches to work out. And I say, Auto power off, still some glitches to work out <laughs> all the time. Like every time something goes wrong with the camera, 13 yeah. years later, I'll still be like, Auto power off, still some glitches to work out. <laughs> Is humanity worth saving? Oh yeah. Yes. I've thought about this a bunch, actually. Right, it's sort of what you write about in your novels. Yeah, I think super yes. Yes. In fact, I will get into that co that conversation fairly deeply in this book. Great, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm almost done. I will send it to you probably Monday. Have you stayed in any hotel rooms as good as the one that had that Picasso no. since 2012? I've never, nope. Not even close. We almost always stay in Courtyard by Marriott. Thank you. There's actually a courtyard in this one, which is unusual. Hank, do you think that I should go back to sports Twitter? My Twitter account, at Sports with John, not regular Twitter. I think you should do what you want to do, John. Since I left Twitter, mm -hmm. Liverpool Football Club have not lost a game in the Premier League. So, why would I go back? <laughs> I'm the one who's making it happen. What's the last movie that made you cry? It was, it was the last movie I saw, which was Little Women, which was very good. Every movie makes me cry. Like, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen Cats yet, but I'm sure it will make me cry. I don't want to see Cats. I don't. <clears throat> um, but I support people who do. 
I'm not here to harsh on your yums. If you like cats, whatever, that's great. God, thank God that somebody likes something somewhere. Hank, mm -hmm. I will see you, I will continue, you know. Yeah, all right. Good morning, Susan! As you can tell from the gray speckled walls behind me, I've once again found myself in an airport, but this airport is different from most, not only because it's playing smooth jazz, but also because it contains... A Hank. Huh? The side of my face has been bruised by the hat that I've been wearing. It's also a little warm in this airport. Did your head get too big? No, my head's the right size. It's your head that's too big. No, but like, did your head get bigger and your hat stopped fitting? Is there a disease that makes your head bigger? There is, Hank. Thanks for mentioning it. Hey, Hank, what's the embarrassing story that got cut from the podcast that's your most embarrassing story ever? I don't think it's that embarrassing, but everybody I tell it to is like, no, you can never say that out loud. Okay, then you just tell it. Tell it. I'm ready. It's time. You've, you're one of the people. No, the time has come. No, actually, I've decided I'm too embarrassed. I knew it. I mean, look, the second most embarrassing <laughs> thing about Hank is that he faked a British accent for a full year when he was a teenager. What was your favorite class that you took in college? Mine was about the emergence of Islam in Central Asia, which is a little bit niche, but it was a great class. I liked all my classes except for physical chemistry. That is not how I felt about college. <laughs> Have either of you ever considered getting contact lenses? I got contact lenses for a little while when I was in high school. They yeah. hurt my eyeballs. I just don't like the way I look without glasses. I feel like I'm not myself. Yeah, no, we're total space aliens. Ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the music is making it very hard. It feels like we should be <laughs> slow dancing. <laughs> Would you ever consider writing a novel together? Yeah. No. I'm surprised that you said yes. Now I'm thinking maybe the answer should be yes. Yeah, because there would be really great spaceships and also great love stories. Oh god, I don't want to write a love story set on a spaceship. Can I just have it be a room, but then the room is happens to be in a spaceship? <laughs> the whole story takes place in a room? Yeah, like they're in space prison or something. That's the gr yeah! Space prison love. It's what it's called. It's the name of the book. It's happening. Based on my current writing pace, <clears throat> look for it in 2031. <laughs> Did you, do you want to see the text message you sent me where you were like, I have a great idea. I did. That was a great idea. That was a million dollar idea. And I, my feelings are hurt that you're even going to read the text messages if it weren't a million dollar idea. A novel that's comprised of a single 52,000 word YouTube comment. That is a great idea. And it's a free idea. I'm sending it out into the world. <laughs> Would you want your collective portmanteau to be jank or Han? Yeah, the collective portmanteau thing is for people who are like in love and dating. Like Benifer. Yeah. William H. Macy and Felicity Huffman. Are dating? They've been together for like 30 years and their couple name is Philium H. Muffman. <laughs> what would be your Patronus? Like a little baby bear. Tiny little baby cub. A little, yeah, a little cute little cub. He's really new. He falls over sometimes. Oh, mine would be a very old fox. Like an elk. <laughs> Are you, Are you kidding you missing me? your inflatable crayon? <laughs> Somebody left an inflatable crayon at the checkpoint and that's cause for a, a, yeah. a full airport alarm? It's 100% some mom somewhere was like, oh, thank God we left that inflatable <laughs> crayon. Hank, why does my cat smell like a diseased goat? You should get that checked out. Why do you know what a diseased goat smells like? 20 years from now, what would you say to someone who wasn't alive about what now felt like? Oh, I don't... It felt very... You know what it... It felt like starting a lot of sentences, <laughs> but not knowing how to finish them. <laughs> Hank, it's so fun to be on tour with you and Catherine. Thanks to everybody who's been here. Thanks to the Madison Airport for being so accommodating and also for their uh, really smooth, smooth jazz. I will see you on Friday, but also now. Let's go eat food. Hold on, we gotta do the thing where I'm, I'm a surprise guest. All right. That, that'll be actually a good intro. Just use all of this. Good morning, John. Good morning, Hank. <laughs> We're at VidCon. From Adobe. Are you going to become one of those people who, like, wears your sponsors all the time? And you're like, I want to shout out Oakley's while I'm here. And also thanks to Diet Dr. Pepper for providing me with that key hydration. Hashtag win at hashtag any cost. Hashtag invest in your digestion. Hashtag Metamucil. <laughs> I actually <laughs> didn't bring my Metamucil, and it's already the problem. Don't move. I'm not going to. Never move again. They won't let me open this. All right, let's go. Because that kid peed off the balcony at VidCon 2016, and now they 
close all the balconies. That is such a great metaphor, by the way, for the internet. <laughs> it's one person piece of a balcony and nobody else gets a balcony ever again. So I asked people to send us questions yep. about our past and future on YouTube. Kathy asks, why did you stop making straight up silly videos? I think what happened is that I felt like the rest of the internet got pretty good at being silly. Right. But it wasn't as good at being earnest. And I was like, oh, I, I, I'm quite earnest. Out of everything you've created, Blake asks, what piece of content are you most proud of? Oh, uh, definitely that um, Tumblr post where it has me jumping against the wall to prove that I'm not an octopus. Mm -hmm. It may be your most viewed piece of media. John, if death is a cube, does that mean you have to meet the face of death six different times? If death is a marble... Will it win a marble race? Probably not. You look very cool. Speaking of marbles, how did the Green Ducks do in the Marble Olympics? I haven't had the chance to watch yet. Well, I don't want to spoil this for you. But, like, go Green Ducks. Shalan says, when you guys retire, I imagine your education channels will continue. But will you let Vlogbrothers die? Or is Vlogbrothers something you will continue until you are physically unable? Well, thanks for that! I want to choose to end the channel. You, you want to upload a, your last video and know it's your last video instead of just... Yes. I mean, it's interesting to think about, like, why are we still doing this? It's been a really long time. It has been over a third of my life. Wow. And you're old. <laughs> I like our job. Like, I like, I, like I like the people I work with. I like making educational video. You I like, like looking super cool in your Adobe hashtag create your story sunglasses. Do I actually look cool? I don't think I look that good. <laughs> well, for one thing, I gotta take off this sticker. <laughs> you know, like, obviously we haven't done it for money for a long time, so there are other reasons we are mm -hmm. making stuff, and the main reason is the main reason we were making stuff in 2007, when there also wasn't any money involved, which is that we like making stuff with people we like, and we like each other, and we really like the community of Nerdfighteria. Yeah. Sorry, that was overly sincere. Can you go... Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. You want me to dab? Don't dab on camera. It's Don't worry. It's a no dab zone. Hashtag no dab zone. Pecan Pancakes wants us to do another year of Brotherhood 2.0 style vlog. Maybe the last year that we do it. Oh, that's a good idea. God, it'd be so hard for me to stop. I think I would, I think I would spiral. The other thing is that it's really good for my mental health to have the anchor mm -hmm. of a Tuesday. Aside from everything else, there's also that. Yeah. I don't want to quit. Let's not quit. Why would we quit? Stop talking about quitting. It's weird. Phoenix says, I just ate dinner. That's great. If you two could switch personalities and lives, would you? Why? Are, no. 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 They're like my kids. I like Hank's kid, but not, not as much as I like my kids. Our Lyft driver just asked us if we were going to see that Chuck Green thing. I mean, I'm really honored if people still associate VidCon with Chuck Green. I was jealous of your eyewear, so I'm putting on my Cinnamon Toast Crunch sleep mask. I'm gonna put on this fanny pack. These are socks. I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the fanny pack? I don't know! I also can't see anything! <laughs> I look like the worst blues brother. I thought it was a blanket. It's a Cinnamon Toast Crunch bathroom! Wait, how did you get this and I didn't get it? I'm super annoyed. What, what? Hank, I'll see you on Tuesday. Hashtag win at hashtag all costs. Avoid the dab. <laughs> no! Good morning, Hank. It's Good Tuesday. Good morning, John! <laughs> oh, we're in a pecan orchard. <laughs> it's really nice. And we're on the side of the road in this beautiful pecan orchard. Hank, it's Question Tuesday, the day that we answer real questions from real nerd fighters. First question, Hank, do you have a favorite hat? Hmm. Available at DFTVA.com only for the next five days, along with all the other pizza mist gear. Extra cool if you wear it like this. Oh boy, I mean, that is, that is a dad hat. Hank, how's the tour been? Uh, so good. So good. So good. It's really just two so goods. It's three so goods. So, so good. good, so, so good. good, so good. Hank's right. Too much or not enough? I would rather have too much. Oh yeah. American. John, how's the book doing? Well, it's been number one on the New York Times bestseller list for three straight weeks, so thank you, everybody. How does one explain Pizza John to somebody who doesn't know about Pizza John? I don't. I feel like it's not something you explain, it's just something you accept. Yeah, you're just like, it's the guy who wrote The Fault in Our Stars, that's all you gotta say. And then they're like, oh, and he's a pizza. Which of you is more of a lightweight? Clearly me. I mean... I mean... He, Hank is the lightest weight. <laughs> John, how sad are you to be missing out on Saturday at PodCon? I'm sorry to miss the first day of PodCon, although there's still going to be plenty of live Dear Hank and John. I'll still be there, but I'm missing it because I'm interviewing former Vice President Joe Biden. So I'm not that sad because I'm pretty psyched <laughs> about interviewing former Vice President Joe Biden. You got, I think people know who Joe Biden is. You don't have to qualify him every time. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I don't? 
I don't know. Did I ever tell you Paul about Paul and the sidebar, do you know who <laughs> Joe Biden is? <laughs> I do feel like you could say nothing and Uncle Joe would fill up the time. Good old Uncle Joe. Uh, God, what if he knows that we call him Uncle Joe and he introduces himself, he's like, Hey John, nice to meet you. I do not appreciate being called Uncle Joe on Vlog Brothers. They're gonna have to like prep him. Right. And it's gonna be like, so who's this guy who's interviewing me? And they're like, well actually he made a video about you in a pecan orchard while wearing his own face on his torso. That was my Joe Biden dance. That was just for Joe. No one else gets to enjoy it. <laughs> Hank, are hot dog sandwiches? No opinion. Whoa! So a thing that Hank and I have been doing on tour is we have decided that we have too many opinions. So every day, Hank and I are abandoning one opinion. I've abandoned my opinion on whether a hot dog is a sandwich. I've abandoned my opinion on Phil Collins' music. I no longer have an opinion about it. I have abandoned my opinion on other people's opinions of M&M flavors. Yeah, which is a big deal for Hank because he it was, was difficult. A hardcore anti-peanut butter M&M. They're so bad. Nope. But nope. you are allowed to love them. There you go. I'm gonna abandon one opinion every day until I find that I am left with some really core important opinions. <laughs> hey Hank, how would you summarize the book tour experience in the form of a haiku? You didn't give any prep for this? You didn't give any prep for this. No, That's, you're, not even, you're not even close. Nauseated bus. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm drunk again. <laughs> Hanging out with John a lot. Birds fly. <laughs> around me. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you knew that about the tour experience. Everyone go outside is just like, woo, 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 well, because of the nauseated bus. Oh, right. The birds flying it's the all birds around like you. in the cartoon. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Hank, where can I get pizza, Miss Gear, and for how much longer? Somebody knows how to get on Question Tuesday. This way. No, you have to go to DFTPA.com and it's only available until Friday. Happy Pizza Miss, everybody. Hank, I will see you whenever. You get back. Oh, there you are. Oh, P.S. Hank, someone asked, can we get a discount code for Pizza Miss merch? And I decided, you know what? Yeah. For the next 24 hours, if you use the discount code pizza, you will get 1% off. 1% off of your purchase at DFTBA.com. <laughs> It's a great discount, Hank. For anything on the whole site? Uh, for anything on the whole site? Whoa. 1%. 1%. Good morning, Hank. It's Wednesday. Guess what we're doing? I know. It the pizza cocktail thing. We're making some pizza cocktails. We're using my Pizza John shot glass and then this glass from the hotel because Hank forgot his Pizza John shot glass. I did. Okay, Hank, first I need some V8 juice, some vodka, a mozzarella stick, and uh, pepperoni. It's a super modern take on the Bloody Mary. I hate Bloody Marys, by the way. No, it's me too. One of my least favorite of the cocktails. Do you like tear it like this and then put it on the Room of the glass. The mozzarella stick and the pepperoni, I think, are mostly for garnish, but... You can stir with the mozzarella stick as well. Ugh. That's bad. That did not taste good. Chaser. Mozzarella stick's pretty good, though. All the stuff you don't want goes in there. Boy, that looks exactly like puke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next cocktail is called the Tipsy John Green. Hank, I need some Diet Dr. Pepper and vodka. So, oh. easy peasy. Pink. That's good. It is good. That's the best Diet Dr. Pepper I've ever had. Ah, it's the best vodka I've ever had. The old school Vlogbrothers joke. It's equal parts champagne, Dr. Pepper, and Strawberry Hill. But they didn't have Strawberry oh. Hill, so we're going with Mike's Strawberry Lemonade. Here's to the species continuing into 2018. Boop! Small pleasures. Really good! Amazing. Oh my god! The, one of the best champagnes I've ever had. A++! plus plus. That's like the best way to have Diet Dr. Pepper, the best way to have Mike's Heart Lemonade, and the best way to have champagne. I'm sorry, you'll excuse me while I pour myself another <laughs> one. How do you make Ovaltine? How do you make Ovaltine? Yes. I don't know. Hank, our next cocktail is called The Hank. One part Strawberry Hill, which in this case is Mike's Heart Lemonade, one part vodka, and one part Ovaltine because you made an Ovaltine joke I in did. the previous video, so you, you're the reason we're in this problem. Maybe I made a mistake. Beautiful, like, striations in John's. Look how pretty it is. Show it with the Pizza John out so people know that there's value in that pizza. Oh, on the remote control! Cheers to Calzones! To Calzones. Not good. This is a very good one. It, mm -hmm. It's called Keep It Simple and it's just a shot of bubbly water. <laughs> Pour yourself a double. <laughs> hey, cheers. Here's the Willis Carrier. Willis Carrier! Long may he live. Mmm. 
Oh, that might be my favorite of the night. Wisconsin! Hank, we are down to our last drink of the I 2017. I like flying like a G6. The guy who created the periodic table also created vodka? He, he defined vodka. Seriously? So yeah, he was a Russian and uh, and he created the definition of what vodka was. Hank, we've got to get to our last drink of tonight, which is, mm -hmm. it's called the Vlog Brothers Classic. Okay. It's strawberry hill with a peep on top. What flavor do you want? Do you want uh, marshmallow ghosts or do you want spooky cats? Just for future reference, peeps don't have flavor. They just have shape. We don't have strawberry hill, but we have Mike's harder strawberry lemonade. If you weren't completely incapacitated, by the two and a half units of alcohol you've had, you would understand now. the Maybe. incredible importance of pitching DFTBA merch during We don't pitches. have to. It's such high quality stuff. People will get it whether we talk about it or not. Oh, I mean, that was almost my favorite drink of the night. Hank. Get a hold of yourself, for God's sakes. The winner and the person who's gonna receive all the Pizza Miss merch is the old school Vlog Brothers joke. Equal parts Strawberry Hill champagne and Diet Dr. Pepper. It was Pepper. good. It was delicious. I want to fill up bottles with it and sell it on the black market. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Hank, thank you for being here. Get some rest, <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow. Good morning, Hank. It's Monday. It's Pizza Miss. I only get to say good morning, Hank. It's Monday once a year on Hi. Pizza Miss. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Pizza Miss is a two-week period where Hank and I make videos back and forth to each other every weekday to celebrate brotherhood and affection and pizza and e-commerce. Hey, Hank. Uh-huh. Do you know why I haven't shaved since the book came out? Is it a luck thing? Nope. AFC Wimbledon? No. That's the business. Oh. I know. It is great. Thank you for noticing. All right, we're in the DFTBA.com warehouse, which means that we are with the Pizza Miss stuff right now that is on sale only for the next two weeks. Hank, let's do a Pizza Miss unboxing video. It's a haul. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> what is it? It's a Pizza Miss sunshade for your car. Oh God. <laughs> the great thing about this also is that it serves as a theft deterrent because <laughs> nobody wants to rob this car. The Pizza Miss hat. It's really good. So like, Subtle. We're not trying to throw it in your face. Does it look good with the mustache? And Pizza Miss shirt. So All every right. year we have a bunch of different designers do a Pizza Miss design for us. So their take on Pizza John. This is Lily Nishida's. This is Chibi John. Oh my goodness. That's <laughs> <laughs> the first time I've seen it. So <laughs> oh man. Oh, the little mustache. <laughs> oh my gosh. Evan Palmer did this one. It's amazing. Oh my so goodness. Good. And then we've got. This one, drippy pizza face. Oh boy, Swerve. Oh boy, thank this you, Swerve. It's a big deal. Oh god. <laughs> Hank, this is the best year pizza miss ever. I know. This is, these are Joey Chews. All these again available at dfb.com only for two weeks. Managing this project is one of my favorite things to do every year because That'd I just be get to tell designers to be weird, and then the weirder it is, the happier I am. Yeah, you like this one? Oh. What do you think to this one? Hmm. I don't know who. Pot Cafe. I also feel like this is a gift that you give to me every year. It's the weirdest time of the year because we make daily videos for no reason other than to hawk weird Pizza John merch. <laughs> All year round. And I'm very grateful oh, I'm for getting it. ready for this. Oh my god, it's my face as a piece of pizza. It's so meta. I love that everybody's worked the mustache in one way or another. Hank, it's almost like my mustache is actually awesome and people like it. Everyone leave a We'll have a poll on the side of the video. Yeah. Tell us if you like John's mustache and want it to stay. I would say tell us that you like John's mustache if and want it to stay. Whether that. Pajama top. It's a pajama top. Oh. It's so oh. comfy. See? Doesn't that look great? I feel ready for sleep. Professionally styled. That actually, I have to say, is... Your pecs look good. Thank you. <laughs> it's incredible. I have been working out, as you know. Uh, that is incredibly comfortable. Oh. It's like a warm hug. And then there's this amazing sweatshirt which was designed by Beth Radloff. It's so cozy. <gasps> My kids are finally gonna think I'm cool. We're just at the cusp of the beginning of the fidget spinner fad too, which right. is great thinking. <gasps> This is a high quality fidget spinner, yeah, actually. Got, so those little faces on there. This is my last Pizza John surprise of 2017. I just want to say thanks to you and everybody at DFTBA.com for making this already a great pizza mess. It's a Pizza John shot glass! For your real pizza parties. For when you go pizza hardy. <laughs> oh god. It's great. I mean, it's definitely a Pizza John shot glass, and this marks the first time. I don't know, Nerd by Terry's getting older. <laughs> I guess it's okay. Yeah, you can drink whatever you want out of it. That's true. Take it's a shot of Ovaltine. There's also a lapel pin pictured 
because we don't have it in stock yet. And John and I just spent a lot of time signing these, and then John spilled Coca-Cola on a bunch of them. Yep, sorry about that. Uh, those will be discounted, but all the profits <laughs> from uh, the posters uh, will go to the National Alliance for Mental Illness, NAMI. If you come up with a uh, Pizza John cocktail for us, virgin and alcoholic, put it in the comments. We're going to select a, t a top one that we like the most. And we're going to send all the pizza and stuff to you. Hank and I will drink all of the suggestions. <laughs> I think that's... <laughs> and then we will make a decision. I think this was a, this a terrible improvisation. Hank, I'll continue to see you right now. But also I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. And the next day. <laughs> all right, we just did our first warm-up show. Hank, how did it go? Bad. No, it went, it went all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, you could kind of tell that we'd never rehearsed. Well, this w was a rehearsal, and I was somewhat surprised when I found out there were going to be 150 people there. They were very nice, though. They were very nice, especially Olivia, who told me all the words to my songs. Hank forgot the words to every single one of his songs, but fortunately there was a young woman named Olivia in the front row who had all of Hank's songs memorized, so everything worked out better than expected. I wouldn't actually say better than expected. <laughs> I would say differently from expected. It worked out just fine. Is this the final version of the book? It is. What does it look like with the dust cover off? Oh, neat. There's a secret. There's a secret. <gasps> There's a secret, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to show you. It's pretty cool, right? That's great. Yeah, that was designed by people in Nerdfighteria. Why didn't you tell me about that? We could have made merch from it. Oh my god. We have merch from it. It's called Turtles All the Way Down. It's available in bookstores everywhere. Okay, Hank, I'm gonna ask you some questions from our audience that we didn't get to answer during the show. If 2016 was a giant dumpster fire, what is a visual representation of 2017? Is it just like what's left after a dumpster fire? 2017, the year of burnt garbage. Do you listen to music while you're writing your books? You, this will surprise you, Hank, but I do. Uh, only the mountain goats. How does it feel to have Hank be a published author. I'm so psyched. I'm so happy. I'm so proud of Hank. John. Yes. If I yeah. was cast in a movie adaptation of your book, who would I play? I mean, that seems unlikely on a lot of levels. Can I be the Tuatara? That's actually not a bad call. Show me your best Tuatara. <laughs> I just got a neck cramp. <laughs> oh God, that's one of the most <laughs> disturbing things I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm gonna put up a real Tuatara. Let's go back to back. Is it a good impression or not? You be the judge. But it has to have like some lines. It definitely does not have lines. The whole point of the Tuatara is that it is a cold Hello, Jedi. Isa. I'm the Tuatara. Hey! Oh man. I'm a living fossil. Again, Turtles All the Way Down is out now and you can go to the subreddit. There is a link below. If you want to talk about spoilers, please don't talk about them in comments. Thank you. Thank you for reading DFTVA. Hank, I will continue to see you right now. All right, Henry, what should be the topic of my Question Tuesday video? Pokemon. Alice, what should my Question Tuesday video be about? <laughs> Monkey turtles? Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. It's Question Tuesday, the day that I answer real questions from real nerdfighters about Pokemons and monkey turtles. Oh, and look, it's a reunion video! We're all here together in the desert. I don't know what monkey turtles are. I also didn't know what a monkey turtle was, so I asked Alice, and she said, it's a monkey that turns into a turtle. Right. Yeah. Right. For why? Oh, I asked her that, and she said, for protection. <laughs> then I asked Alice how big monkey turtles were, and she said, 100 big. It's big, actually. Well, or not. Ah, it's true. It depends on if it's millimeters. You need to learn units. Talking to Alice is like talking to a not very good AI. <laughs> She's like a bad chatbot. Yeah. She said to me, Uncle Hank, I got this new water bottle. And I said, is it better than your old water bottle? And she said, it's pink, the other's purple. Like, it's like, I asked you a question, and you answered a different question, but right. you kind of were on the same topic. She's also like a chatbot in that a lot of times if you ask her a question, she'll say, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> what is your favorite Pokemon, and why is it Charizard? It's not Charizard, it's Snorlax. Because he's cute and large and powerful. Mine is Andrew. Andrew? Yeah, have you, have you seen the Andrew Pokemon? Is he a monkey turtle? No, he's just a guy who plays guitar. What Pokemon could best keep a steady job? Oh, probably Andrew. <laughs> Put it in your head, Charizard managing like a Wendy's. And if the, like the grill breaks, he's just on all the burgers. Oh my god, he can cook the burgers. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. What is the most underrated Pokemon? Oh, I think the most underrated Pokemon is Surfing Pikachu. I'm gonna go with like the, the Wiggle Puffed. Jigglypuff? Or uh, Spike Ladder. Spike Ladder. That's a real one. Is it? You ask Henry what he wants to be when he grows up, he says inventor, and then he pauses and says, of Pokemon. <laughs> John. Yes. How can I be the very best, like no one ever was? <laughs> oh, come on! If you had to permanently dye your hair a non-natural color, what would it be? Uh, silver? 
Ooh, well you're getting there already. I know, I'm on my way! <laughs> when I was in college, I thought to myself, I want to have a job where when I turn 40, I can get a mohawk. Mm -hmm. And now I do! Hey, welcome to Crash Course Biochemistry, it's me, your cool teacher Hank, with the 40 year old mohawk. <laughs> Doesn't all value derive from humans? Hmm. No. I just want to say for the record, Hank is not taller than I am, it's just that he is standing on a rock. <laughs> I was downhill. Hank, what is your favorite adjective to throw in when you want to spice up a sentence? Spicy. I don't like that at all. What do you think of that three-point shot, Hank? Spicy. spicy! I don't want to be, like my friends will all be like, yeah, Hank, the one who says spicy all the time. Oh yeah, Hank, spicy green, they call him. Oh shoot. Who would win in a fight between a monkey turtle and a turtle monkey? Oh, definitely a monkey turtle, because it could turn into a turtle for protection. What is your favorite type of plate? Oh, uh, for me, it's the, um, the kind that the Earth's crust is on. Ooh. I mean, those are good. Sometimes you're at a really fancy restaurant and mm -hmm. there's a plate on the table before the food comes out and then they take that plate away. Yes. And I'm like, what was that? Right. Why was that plate there? Yeah, just in case. Explain it to me! It's a just in case plate. Would you rather have C-3PO in your house or R2-D2? R2-D2? Because yeah. like, I, like whenever I hang out with you, I kind of feel like I do have C-3PO in my house. That's true. Hank, what Pokemon do you think looks the most like you? I don't know either, but I'm excited to find Mi out from like, our viewers. Isn't Mr. Mime the only one that walks on two feet? Uh, um, I mean... <laughs> or like is vaguely human shaped? I don't know of a greater insult than saying <laughs> that someone looks like Mr. Mime. <laughs> We're gonna go keep walking, so goodbye, friends. Bye, I'll see you now. You wanna see our, uh, our incredibly sophisticated tripod, by the way? It's Hank's wallet and two rocks. Doo doop! Good morning, Hank, it's Tuesday. Wait, what is this background? Am I on a green screen? Am I in Montana? Yes, you are. It's Hank! It's a reunion video! It's happening! Yeah, Hank is making his triumphant but temporary return to Vlogbrothers. Hello? Hello! I might make another video this week about VidCon. You're so bad at paternity leave. Okay, Hank, I got some Question Tuesday questions from Nerdfighters for you. First, how is Orin doing? Orin is your son. He's good. He's good. He's a good baby. So... cute. He's very cute. Oh, it's almost unbearable. I think he may have smiled at me this morning. Really? Maybe. He might have just been pooping. Hank, why is there no sequel to The Fault in Our Stars? Uh, it would have been, I think, maybe not the happiest book. I also don't really know how it could have happened, but believe me, people in Hollywood did make suggestions. <laughs> Favorite Disney movie, Go. Is Go a Disney movie? I thought that that was way too dark to be a Disney movie. I think it was rated R. <laughs> I liked um, the new one that Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote the songs for. You know Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote a song for the new Star Wars movie. Unfortunately, we don't um, have the ability to clear the rights to that song. <laughs> but so on the upside, that was not a good enough version. Yeah, uh, nobody knows what I was singing. For copyright to come into play. What is the most surprising- Frozen! That wasn't the question. What is the most surprising <laughs> thing about having a baby? The noise of the poops. Yes. Like, literally surprising. Sonic. Like, like I'll be like, Hoof! Within the first day of Orin being home, uh, yeah. he, he pooped with his diaper off while I was changing it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hank, I, that's a rookie error. I'm a rookie. I know. Henry pooped on me so many times, Alice pooped on me never. Because I would go in with like seven diapers. I'd be wearing like a diaper suit of armor. But I went ahead and tried to catch it with my hand. Nope. I was like, ugh! Switch glasses! Every time we do this, I'm like, yours are dirty! Nah, that's how I like There's... to see the world. Through smudged lenses. This oh, eye is this. pretty much exactly the same. Oh yeah, wow. The left eye is the exact same. It's almost like we're brothers. <laughs> If you could take one book to a desert island, what book would it be? I've been thinking and a lot about like this And just like leave question. it there so no one could ever read it again? No, no, no. And Rand's the fountain. <laughs> Here is my idea. It's a book where if you read it forwards, all the, it's just the collected works of Shakespeare. So it's rich, it's complicated, it's beautiful. And then if you read it backwards, um, like the back sides of the pages, okay. are a survival guide for how to live on a <laughs> desert island. I was going to... Uh, go with the the King Killer trilogy by Patrick Rothfuss, even though the last book isn't out yet. Because I, I, if I was gonna get stuck in a desert island, I'd better have that third book. I was gonna say, how terrible would it be? You know what would happen though, because Pat Rothfuss is such a great guy. Um, it, you wouldn't get to leave the desert island, but an airplane would fly over, drop the third book when it comes yeah. out, and just wave goodbye to you. Yeah, and like a bottle of water. And you'd be like, that's all I needed. Thanks. <laughs> Hank, do you have any self care advice? Uh, I I have lots, but self care, bunny. 
has better self-care advice. Yeah, self-care bunny is just here to remind you to be nice to yourself. Yeah, what did we learn from Nathan Zed's video? You are a good burrito. Not the best burrito. You don't have to be the best, okay? Stop putting so much pressure on yourself. You're a really good burrito. There's no best burrito. That's right, there's only different kinds of good burritos. That's true, actually. Yeah. That's true on many levels. All right, Hank, write an autobiography in five words. I guess mine would probably be, um, is this mole a concern? <laughs> I wrote, he made stuff with John. Oh, oh God, that's so nice! <laughs> Hank, thanks for taking time away from your baby to make a Question Tuesday video. Thank Catherine. <laughs> I will see you right now. All right. Bye. Why are we, what, when did this become a thing? What, why? Do you know Alice does that? She thumbs up? Uh, yeah, whenever you're like, hey Alice, smile. She doesn't smile, but she's like. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Good morning, John, it is Tuesday. Nope, Friday. Good morning, Hank, it's a reunion video! Hi. How are you? How's it going? We're in... We both kind of look tan. No, well, I think it's because of the bad lighting. So, uh, a very special Question Tuesday, John. It's been nine years that we've been making Vlogbrothers video. I wanted to do a Question Tuesday mm. in which we tell people things they still don't know about us. I asked Twitter, and here are some of the questions that I received. <sighs> Who had more girlfriends in elementary through high school? Mm, me. Yes, I had more girlfriends in elementary school, though, I will say. Mm, I killed it in elementary school. No, you didn't. I had long-term relationships in elementary school. That's right, I was just like, hop, 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 hop. I held so many hands. Did you? When you were kids, did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up? I thought that I wanted to be an oceanographer. But but it turns out that I don't like uh, boats. I did want to be a writer when I was a kid, but I never thought that it was a realistic job. I thought it was like wanting to be an astronaut or something. What is the pettiest thing you still argue about? We did have an argument yesterday about which uh, part of the human body would take the longest to eat. No, I feel like the argument was about which part of the human body would make the largest uh, contiguous state. It's all petty until you're a cannibal. And then it's suddenly <laughs> very, very real. Gwen asks, does John cast movies? No. Who has bigger ears? asks Sarah. Hmm. I don't know. My ears are this big. My ears are this big. Let's measure with the Goonies, like right here. Okay. I made a little mark. All right. There we go. I have the bigger ears. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm older. Yeah, they keep growing. They keep getting bigger. Henry is right behind the camera, and uh, I just asked him if the video was funny, and he said no. So I'm concerned. So Hank, can you do something funny? It's like, <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> All right, the video's funny again. Bubble baths, soothing relaxation or yes. boiling cesspool? Oh, so boiling cesspool. No, 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 no. We're about to have the pettiest argument we've ever had. <laughs> baths are wonderful. It feels like like putting my entire body on the every other part of my body. Ainsley asks, nerd fighter emoji. There's a, there's one that I, I use. Is it this one? Yeah, the lady who's going like this. Hank, what is your 20 year goal? Oh, when I'm 55, I want to still have a colon. <laughs> how is Dave Green? Fine, he's doing good. Whenever I'm like, how you doing, Dave? He's just like, living the dream. L T D. Mm, he does say that. It's weird. I don't think it's that weird. I think it's cool. I keep thinking it's F T D, which is the flower delivery service. <laughs> have you ever seen each other poop? <laughs> Henry is Henry finally like, laughing again. Probably when he and Hank was like oh, three right, months old. Yes, yes. But it's been a while. Rapid fire, what's your favorite musical? Hamilton. What's your favorite poem? Uh, the Second Coming by W.B. Yeats. Uh, what book have you reread more than any other? Pooh, actually, probably Hatchet by Gary Paulson, if you go oh, back wow. to my childhood. Last question, Hank. What do you think of as your biggest accomplishment? When you do that, it makes shadow animals on my body. <laughs> is this your biggest accomplishment <laughs> right now? This <laughs> making a terrible duck that kisses me on the cheek. <laughs> my biggest professional accomplishment is Vlogbrothers. Uh, my biggest personal accomplishment is uh, behind the camera. You picked Henry? No, I mean... Uh, I'm also very proud of Vlogbrothers, of course, but among that, uh, in there, I think my greatest accomplishment is having made the internet's most viewed video of a goat giving birth. It's a thing that I did. That's and incredible. I, no one can take that away from me. I'll see you on Friday. Tuesday. <laughs> I'm so bad at days. <laughs> I know. I know. It's...
Um, it'll be a problem for our whole lives. Good morning, Hank. It's Wednesday. It's Pizza Mess. We've just come from the uh, Save the Children Gala. I uh, met Jennifer Garner. That was weird. And I. But she seemed cool. Uh, stood nearby Olivia Wilde. It could be a gala or a gala. Do you want to answer some questions that yes. people just sent? In? Oh, John Green, uh, what is your opinion on lamps? I am opposed to them. I love lamp. Debate over the best kind of chocolate, white, milk, or dark. I don't know if this is going to be a debate, but I actually have a very strong opinion. So let's just do this one, two, three. One, two, three, dark. dark. Oh, thank God, because we were about to not be brothers anymore. Will there ever be Dear Hank and John merch? That's what the world is missing is Dear Hank and John merch. You know what kind of merch we do have? Pizza John merch available hey, now, only for a couple more days at dftba.com. Pizza Miss merch. It's like suits, but mostly t-shirts. Actually, you know what I was wearing shoelaces. underneath that the whole time oh! during the Save the Children gala. He likes to keep me close to his heart. John. Yeah. Do your best impression of your favorite dinosaur. We don't know what dinosaurs sounded like. It's true. <laughs> There. Might be. It okay. Might be. I'm glad you made it. At least you made a noise. That was a Diplodocus. <laughs> my favorite dinosaur. Oh. But we don't know if that's what they sound like. We don't know. We have no way of knowing. We have no way of knowing. <laughs> Maybe they just were like, sounded like humans. They're just like, ah, rah, 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 Dog from that that thing on Tumblr. Ha ba 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 ka ba da da. Rosiana took away my Tumblr password, so I don't know what's happening on Tumblr anymore. I got the ba Sounds funny. It's <laughs> pretty funny. Why did you take away my Tumblr password? <laughs> there are so many lovely things happening. I got the ba ba. Nicole's question is: What are your holiday traditions? Say what we're thankful for. Oh, uh, our mom always puts tremendous pressure and on us. There's a great deal of pressure to come up with like a new thing that we're thankful for. So if I say like I'm thankful for my kids, mom will always say no no no. No, no, you said that in 2011. <laughs> and I'll have to think of something new that I'm thankful yeah. for. And I'm 38, you know? Yeah. That's 38 years of having to be grateful. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta like take individual foods. <laughs> like, this year I'm thankful for green beans. God, I'm so grateful for cranberries. Where would we be without them as a species? Yeah, roughly, yeah, exactly the same place. But where would cranberries be? <laughs> they would be dead. Uh, like 40% of species, which we've eliminated in the last 500 years. Well, Go team! I'm actually, no. That was not an appropriate high five. <laughs> that, well, I, I mean 99.9% .9 of species that have existed no longer exist. Right, but uh, usually not so rapidly. We've eliminated more in the last 400 years than, uh, than in the previous million. Yeah. Yeah, we're roughly on par with an asteroid. We are killing it. Oh, literally. Hank, can you please describe the meaning of life from the perspective of a chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Hank, how did uh, you and John meet your wives? I met my wife. She lived across a... Uh, a, 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 a desert. <laughs> A uh, continent hallway. An ocean. <laughs> from, my, from my dorm room. All right, room service is here. We have to go. Hank, yes. thank you for being awesome. I like your tie, by the way. You're welcome. I got it at Banana Republic. DFTBA, I will see you right now and also tomorrow. Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. It's Question Tuesday, the day that I answer real questions from real nerd fighters. Let's get... Uh-oh. It's a wild Hank. And he's goto bombing me. Yesterday we were out to dinner and I made a dumb face in a photograph and everybody at the table decided it was goto bombing. Yeah, it was like photo bombing, but he looked like a goat. Mm. Speaking of goats, our first question is would you rather fight one John sized goat or three goat sized Johns? I'd rather fight one John sized goat. You are crafty. Making you a goat would make you easier to fight. There are definitely goats bigger than you. I, I don't think so. I think that I might be bigger than any goat by Siri? weight. Are there goats bigger than my brother? I'm not sure I understand. I don't understand either. Let's go to the next question. What are your thoughts on goats and sweaters? Oh, you mean like uh, where you have a sweater and there's a goat on it? No, goats in sweaters. A sweater wearing a goat. I mean a goat wearing a sweater. A sweater wearing a goat is a fantastic idea! Did you know goats have rectangular pupils, by the I way? I did know that. Yeah. Do you know why? They're like horizontal rectangles, which probably means that they're trying to look out in more, multiple... Yeah, like, peripheral better, better. vision. I want to know what that's like. I bet the Oculus Rift could like 
could show me what it's like to be a goat. Do you want a, another question? Yes. Let's do another question. How many llamas is one goat worth? Can I just pause real quick and can ask why all the questions are about goats? The thing is, I just asked for questions that are just happen to be a bunch about goats. I also asked them to ask questions about goats. Oh, I see your tweet. Goat questions preferred. Who can do the best impression of a goat? You want to go first? No, I want to go not at all. I'm happy to lose if Hank will try. Ah, that was so bad. Ah, <laughs> that's what they sound like. You've never even met a goat. You know what they sound like. I, that was perfect. True. That's not true. Ah, I, Hank, I made the internet's number one video about goat mating. Don't tell me I've never <laughs> seen a goat. I've seen a goat do it. And they make that noise. Nope. <laughs> this is a question that I don't think you'll find particularly difficult, Hank. Would you rather have a goat eat your ear, or would you rather eat a goat's ear? How is that even a question? <laughs> it's like the old question, would you rather uh, eat five pine cones or poop one? Like, as unpleasant as it would be to eat five pine cones, obviously, that's the better option. I'd rather eat a goat's ear than any other part of a goat, because you could take the goat's ear, and it would be fine. Not fine. How would you feel if you were earless? I noticed that you and I have different iPhone passwords, so if you want uh, to ask another question, you're gonna have to log in. John, where does the word goat come from? Oh, I know that actually. It comes what from it, Old English. What is your favorite breed of goat? Brand? Brand of goat? Breed! I'm gonna go with the American Mountain Goat. I was gonna say the Mountain Goats too. Which kind of Mountain Goat though? Oh, John Darnielle probably. If you had seven goats between you, what would you name them? I would like to have four of the goats. That's all Wait. that matters to me. <laughs> I would like to make sure that if we have seven goats between us, I have the four and you have the three. How about, alternatively, you have all seven? Wait, I've rethought my answer. I would like to give you the seven goats. All right, I took another guess at your iPhone password. I still didn't get it. Goatacorn or unigoat? Yeah, so we're talking about two different animals. The okay. goatacorn is a goat with a unicorn horn. The unigoat is a unicorn with a goat head, or as I like to call it, a horse. And I'm gonna go with the unigoat. Here is a non-goat question for you, Hank. Okay. What really gets your goat? <laughs> Awful people succeed. Hey, thank you so much for doing Question Tuesday. With happy me. birthday. It's your birthday yesterday. Everybody say happy birthday to that guy. Uh, I will see you on Friday and right. now. Okay, and we have to go because we're out of tape. So, good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. I'm actually at a mini golf course. I wish you were here, but you're busy like interviewing the president or whatever. Oh, wait. I'm in Florida where this happens. It's Question Tuesday, the day that we answer real questions from real nerd fighters while also playing mini golf. Are you nervous about interviewing the president of the hey. United States? Thanks for bringing it up. Are you? Yes, I'm trying to golf. But is it going to affect your golfing? <laughs> it absolutely is. Apparently. Oh, 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 oh! That was terrible. Why do you look so much taller than me? It must be because there's something wrong with the ground. Anyway, what's your favorite flightless bird? You're my favorite brother. Hank just got a hole in one, but I insisted that he tapped it twice because I don't want to get too far behind, and I'm the big brother, and that's how we compete. I may not be better than you, Hank, but I am able to change the rules midstream. Are you behind me? What are you... Nothing. There's a ton of waterfalls in this joint. If your last name were any other color, what would it be? Oh, chartreuse. <laughs> Uh, I would go with blue, which I think is a kind of chartreuse. The next question is, uh, will you try on each other's glasses? And I think we should do that and putt-putt. Ooh. Hank's prescription is actually pretty close to mine. I feel fairly comfortable. Yours are just mostly dirty. Oh my god, John. I don't clean my glasses very often, but that's just disgusting. Can he perform under the pressure of wearing his brother's glasses? It's Hank Green. It's Hank Green. Oh, no! There it is. What? That was a good bounce. Between the two of us, who was weirder in high school? Oh, I don't know, me? I feel like me? You had all those friends. Who's better at rhyming? I don't know, but I have pretty good timing. Sorry, I was trying to think of a, a rhyme for timing. I didn't get there. Diming? Fliming? Climbing? <laughs> God, it took me a minute. Hank might be better. Who's your favorite member of One Direction? Let's go with the police officer guy. Oh, I like the construction worker, yeah. you know? I they, that. I, they're all good, though. I love that song. Yeah. YMCA. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. What should win the Oscar for best picture? 
I'm gonna go with the Fault in Our Stars, John. Not nominated. Um, I'm gonna you go. Look like the Tipios clouds right now. I know it's all marketing. <laughs> Never not marketing. So I'm gonna go with Whiplash or Selma. I thought both of those were excellent. Hank, how do you feel about koalas? They poop in their sleep. Is that true? Can you play the ukulele? No. Yes, I can play like two chords. I can't play it at all. And what's your favorite type of hummus? Uh, chickpea. I didn't know there were types of hummus. It's okay. the final hole and we are tied. Oh, it's tense. Very tense. 18. Tank is significantly closer than I am. For the tie. No! Oh, oh, oh no. How does it feel to be less good than me? I'll see you on Friday. Good morning, John. It's Friday. In fact, it is Black Friday. The, the day darkest that... Friday of the year. The blackest, deepest, dark. It's so ominous. Everything is 20% off at DFTBA.com through Monday. I think that is great news. It's bad for us. It's kind of bad. We're fun. crazy! <laughs> okay. I've never seen uh, an advertisement for Don's Guns in Indianapolis. No, I don't live in Indianapolis. Uh, he sells guns, and at the end of the commercial, he says, I don't want to make any money. I just love to sell guns. <laughs> it's basically, that's how I feel about much. hoodies. I'm glad you don't feel that way about guns. Let's start the video over. I think that was all gold. Okay. Black Friday is the day that happens after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the day that we say what we're thankful for. So we thought today we would share some of the things that we're thankful yeah. for. Yeah. I am thankful that childhood death around the world is decreasing at an astonishing pace. Uh, that we're, we're maybe only like 30 or 40 years away from the vast majority of poor countries being middle income countries. That was a different direction I was going to go for the video. I was thinking more like, I'm thankful that farts sound funny because otherwise they'd just be farts and it would just be stinky. But with the funny sound. They're awesome. I'm also really grateful for Nerdfighteria, uh, for like the chance to be part of a community that's committed to doing good and also having a lot of fun. I'm thankful for like human hair, because I think it's like, I think it's pretty and functional. I'm thankful for people who work in customer support. Oh, you know, I'm so thankful for everyone who works in retail today. I have worked uh, yeah. a Black Friday or two in my life, and it is not easy. I'm really grateful that there's this young generation of people who are committed activists and working hard to decrease world suck on lots of fronts in their communities. I think that's really exciting. I am grateful for all the things that you are grateful for. I'm also grateful that my dog is cool with uh, me being the person who decides when and where she poops. Like, I would not put up with that. You know what else I'm grateful for? What, what, what? I'm grateful uh, that when I show up in Missoula, Montana with no winter clothes because I've been uh, in North Carolina, that uh, I happen to own part of a warehouse that sells hoodies. I could just layer myself yeah, in you infinite could, hoodies. Right, you could go from small all the way to extra, extra large, and you could Realistically, wear... Realistically, I could go from large <laughs> all the way to extra, extra large. Here's, what, here's a serious one, here's a serious one. I am thankful that the Earth's core is partially liquid, allowing for currents in conductive materials that produce the Earth's electromagnetic field. Which allows us to go outside in the daytime without dying. Is that really true? Yeah. I'm thankful for that. That's... <laughs> That sounds like a huge win. Yeah. I'm also grateful that humans landed a thing on a comet. This is so much harder than it sounds. It sounds incredibly hard. There's a comet, it's like and we're like, I know what we'll do. We'll, we'll, we'll shoot a slingshot and it'll hit the comet. You know what that reminds me of? Yeah. The miracle of AFC Wimbledon's journey to League Two. I gave one of these to Henry and you know what he said when I put it on him? What? He said, I'm gonna grow into this. <laughs> There's a lot of things to be thankful for. I want to know what you're thankful for, Nerdfighteria. Yeah. I want to know a serious <laughs> thing you're thankful for and a silly thing you're thankful for. I have to go sign posters now. I don't have the normalist brain and nothing makes my brain feel calmer and happier than signing over and over and over again. It brings me great joy. Nerdfighters, thank you for allowing me to sign so many things in the last year. <laughs> I hope to be able to keep it up for the rest of my life. That is weird. John? I will see you on Friday. Good morning, John. Good morning, Hank. Where are, oh, it's Ford Awesome. We must be at the DFTBA.com warehouse. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, where's the camera Goodbye, going? camera. It's Question Tuesday the day, it's, 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 it's Question Tuesday the day that we answer, it, it's Question Tuesday the day that we answer I'm real questions. I'm gonna leave all of those in, I know you by will. the way. I know you will. It's Question Tuesday the day that we answer real questions from real nerd fighters. It's Friday. You sure you don't wanna upload this on my day? I'm sure. All right. I've just asked on Twitter if people have any questions for us, John. Would you like to answer some questions for people? Yes, that's how Question Tuesday and Friday Jessica works. would like to know, what were your first cars? My first car was a 1991 Volvo 240 named Funny. Arlo. That was my first car too. <laughs> and actually, uh, after Arlo, got the same car again 
but uh, white, white and smelled more like vomit. Hank, how after so long have you guys not gotten tired of each other? Oh, I'm so tired of you. My question is how after all this time have you guys not gotten tired of us? <laughs> hey John. Yes? Evelyn would like to know how do you find a nerd fighter at your university? One of my favorite ways is to wear some kind of a nerd fighter clothing because that tends to attract them. Uh, lots of colleges now have nerd fighter clubs. And if you don't have a nerd fighter club at your university, you should start one. You can start one. The case Kayla asks, who is playing Margo in the Paper Towns movie? Hank? Uh, I am. Yes! We have been begging Hank. There is no other Margot Roth Spiegelman. That's what we've been saying. It's not a passion project for Hank. No, it's I'm just really not interested in the project itself. Purely financial. I'm the Nick Cage of John Green movies. I'll do any John Green movie as long as you pay me enough. <laughs> Poor Nick Cage. <laughs> so oh, hopefully God. he doesn't watch. Uh, he I is am a huge Nick Cage fan, actually. This would is fake. Is that Christopher Walken? No, that was Nick Cage from, from Jack, Jack from Nicholson. Moonshot. How about you sing the answer to the next question? <clears throat> yes. Hey, John. Yes? Beth would like to know, will she be able to buy one of those posters you signed? Yes. Is that how you sing? We are at the warehouse right now because John's been signing posters all day and I've just been watching him. By the way, dftba.com. Link in the doobly do. Or just go to dftba.com. You can just type it. Just five letters. Hannah asks, any advice on strengthening relationships between siblings? Make a video blog together. I am a big believer, actually, in shared projects. Yeah. Like, Hank and I are a lot closer because we do stuff together. I think that goes for most relationships. Henry and I were just making Legos. Yeah, it's so like, fun. Yeah. Father, son, he, he wasn't really doing anything. Right, you made Legos. And, and he was like, go, Dad, do it. And then he would be like, that's the bad guy. And I'd be like, I don't know, I mean, aren't villains complicated? Isn't, you know, we don't know that person's backstory. We need to learn to imagine them complexly. And Henry would say, he's really bad. I have a question. <laughs> yeah. Tell me some more cute stuff Henry says. <laughs> I will tell you one more thing. Uh, we're emphasizing learning, how like knowledge is power. Henry said to Sarah the other day, you know what's a good kind of learning? And Sarah said, what? And Henry said, learning how to turn on the TV. How does Henry feel about me? Is he a fan of Hank? Yeah, no, he said, uh, right before I left to come out here, he said, I would like you to give a message to Uncle Hank and Auntie Catherine. I'm glad, well, I'm glad that, that message got passed off. It was literally the last thing he said to me before I left. So, and I was waiting, you know, I was waiting, like, I love them, I miss them, I can't wait to see them. He's probably watched my videos and he knows that that's how I talk. John. <laughs> yes. Thank you for doing Question Tuesday with me. It has been my pleasure. I'll see you on Tuesday, but also now. I think they can see us a little bit. I don't think they can see us. They're thirsty for Augustus Waters, John. Is that what it said? Yeah. <laughs> that's a funny pun. Because he's Waters. Yeah. It's, an important, cool. it's an important metaphor in the book. Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. It's actually Monday. We're on our way to the Fault in Our Stars movie premiere. It's very exciting. The collaboration between the two of us and the community that's emerged from it means more to me than anything else in my professional life. And before we go do this crazy thing, I just want to say thank you. You're welcome. Also, thank you. That's what I was waiting for, the mutual thank you. <laughs> Hold on, I have to video blog really quickly. Instead of a red carpet, we have a Tipios blue carpet. How awesome is that? So I'd be signed for some people who'd wind up to produce at the premiere and then said hi to a lot more people who had OK Cloud posters, by which time my brain was slightly fried. OK, Hank, I have successfully signed a bunch of uh, posters and Everything not skin, that's my rule. Anything that's not skin, and I am back on the magic Tiffius blue carpet. So Hank, currently across from me are like a large wall of photographers. Uh, that's hence all the flashes, but uh, I need to tell you that the Fault in Our Stars movie is coming out on Friday, this Friday. Like, the day after, the day after tomorrow. Unless you go to the night before our stars, in which case it's coming out the day after tomorrow. If you want to see it on Thursday, at least in some cities that is still possible, you can go to the thefaultinourstarsmovie.com and get tickets, link in the doobly doo. I am sweating through my Burberry shirt, which is only increasing my already sizable anxiety. Oh, you look so cute. Then that wolf showed up for our Today Show live chat. There are people from the Today Show talking to me inside of my ear. And then came the live chat with our astonishingly beautiful and talented Hazel Shading Doobly. By the time that was over, things were starting to get quite crowded. I met Indy 500 winner Ryan Hunter Ray, then things got even more crowded and I kind of lost my ability to even. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't have, I don't have a... 
I don't have a talking part. Took a selfie with Mike Birbiglia and then stood on the carpet with my brilliant and lovely wife just a few feet away from Shailene and Laura Dern. And then I got to meet Spelling Bee co-champion An Sun Su Jo, unquestionably the highlight of my evening. Okay, Hank, I just did all of those press interviews and now I'm going to go into the movie. Look, 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 look. That's the movie. Well, Hank, they didn't let me film inside the theater, so greetings from Tuesday, where my view of Manhattan is not half bad. Hank, the premiere was just absolutely amazing, laughing and crying with 1,200 people, and I'm so glad that you were sitting there two seats away from me. So, Hank, before I say anything else, I just want to establish that I'm not getting paid for the movie. Like, I got paid for the rights a long time ago, but I don't get a percentage of ticket sales or anything, and I don't have to talk about it, and if I didn't like it, Believe me, you'd know. But in fact, I love the movie. I think it's amazingly faithful to the book and powerful and funny and moving. Hank, the people who made this movie cared about the story and they care about each other and you can really see that. Last night we all got to be together one last time, which was sad in a way, but it was also very exciting because it means that soon, in fact very soon, everyone will get to see the movie. Thanks to all of Nerdfight Terry for being part of this process with me. Read the book first! And Hank, I will see you on Friday when the Fault in Our Stars movie will be out in theaters everywhere. How you doing, Hank? Well, so I kind of, you know, it was a great premiere that we had, but you know, okay, Hank. It's the beach! A couple of nerds at the beach. We're actually quite far away from the ocean, because there, there's sharks in there. Henry's very nervous about orcas. He keeps being like, is an orca gonna eat me? And I'm like, well, not <laughs> if you're eight inches in the water. Good morning, John. Good morning, Hank. It's Friday. It is Friday. Uh, how, uh, uh, how are your hot dog legs? The infernal day star <laughs> is... Shining its radiation down upon us. I can feel it giving me cancer. Light is the visible sign of the invisible light. That's T.S. Eliot. It's lovely, but it, it doesn't mean anything to me. When I ask Henry what light is, he always says in his cute little four-year-old voice, it's the visible sign of the invisible light. I find that very cool. <laughs> Question Friday, the day that we answer real questions from real nerd fighters. Took our laptop down to the beach, because that's how we roll. Am I on the screen? I'm a little worried that you're, you're cropping there. I'm worried that yeah, you're cropping me It's a really wide out. lens. Right. Melissa wants okay. to know, when is the art assignment going to premiere? First episode of the art assignment comes out late February. Subscribe, link in the doobly-doo. She also wants to know, who the F is Hank? Oh. You weren't prepared for this? Why, why, I, I've never Ready. Hank is the second largest ocean on Earth. I don't even know which one that is. That's this one! No. Oh, no, I think this is the Gulf, but whatever. If you two were fighting and your only weapons were the objects to your left, how would you use them and who would win? You have a chair. Either that or you. I, I, I could just beat you with you. Oh, you hate oh. yourself. I just have to say it. <laughs> Computer. I would sand Hank's computer because there's nothing that would upset him more. He would panic. Danny wants to know, how come Dave Green is never in the video? <laughs> Who's Dave? The third unsuccessful brother. <laughs> Dave has been made up by a Tumblr. How did this happen and I didn't even know about it? Suddenly I have <laughs> an imaginary brother. Amy wants to know, why is love so hard? What is love? Don't hurt me. Hurt me. No, no more. more. That was really not even close. People on the beach are looking at us funny, by the way. The people on the beach, they think, think that, that we're crazy. crazy. The, the people, people on the beach, beach they, they think, think that we're crazy. It should always be a little bit of work because yeah, it matters. Th yeah, that's true. Anyway, there's all different kinds of love. There's um, all different kinds of farts. <laughs> this is a really good YouTube video. We should, <laughs> we should do this. We should do this more often. In comments, tell me all the different kinds of farts. No, in comments, tell us about Dave Green. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I need that. No, I need that, John. We need that for the rest of the video. So, know. so go get some glue. Beautiful. <laughs> Wendy wants to know, which of you has the worst glasses prescription? I don't know. Let's take a switcheroo here. Definitely me. Yeah, definitely you. Wow. Yeah. Wait till you're I old. I am on acid right now. Wait well, yours is very sharp, but none of the things you know, are your lining left, up. Your left eye is almost identical to my left eye. Your right eye is yeah, the right super eye. Super weird. Who looks better? Yep. Do I look like glass. a naughty professor? Who looks better in the other's glasses? Is that, is that a na thing, naughty professor? I don't I think so. Up? I think no. you made that up. It's, uh, what is it? The, it's nutty. A nutty <laughs> professor. That's what you were thinking Oh, I, I wanted to ask uh, if you could tell me anything about the Fault in Our Stars trailer. Uh, mm, grr, mm, mm. It will come out soon, in the next few weeks, and, um, yes. I have seen it. Okay. I thought it was truly excellent. I hope other people like it too. I'm very nervous for everyone to see it, but hopefully soon. John, thanks for being on a question video with me. Oh, no, thanks And for... taking me here to Florida, where I probably got a sunburn just in the last 20 minutes. I have sunscreen on. I didn't do that. Best wishes. You need to wrap up this video. <laughs> I, I yeah. need to go because I'm, I may actually not survive this. Uh, I'll <laughs> see you on Tuesday. <laughs>
great small ocean you put me in. Good morning, John. Good morning, Hank. It's Friday. Question Friday, the day that we answer real questions. From real nerd fighters. Let's get right to it. How many times have you read The Fault in Our Stars? Have I? I don't know. I mean, how many times have I read the finished book? Yeah. The, the one that's out in hardcover? Yeah, that one. Zero. <laughs> Why would I read it? There's I'm... lots of other books that other people wrote that I could read that I don't remember. How many times have you read it? Twice. Yeah. I read it once before it came out and once after it came out. Thanks for reading it twice. What's your favorite book series at the moment? My favorite book series is always going to be Harry Potter. I like Divergent a lot, though. Which one of you would win in an arm wrestling match? It's gonna make for bad video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am gonna lose. Oh! <laughs> I mean, I could have kept going, but I was laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I won with my wit. Did you, Hank, ever cry to one of John's books? Yes. I looked at it and I cried to it. <laughs> I also have cried to one of John's books. If you got to give each other catchphrases, what would they be? Imagine complexly! <laughs> Yours would actually be fart, fart, fart. How do you like your eggs? I like them... Scrambled. Inside of a biscuit. Can you please show us some family photos from when you two were younger? It's funny that you should ask, because we're in the room that has the, the photo album. I don't know if I want people to see this. Oh, that's pretty cute. You're giving me a little bear hug. Which one of you is hotter? We'll have to have a poll. Like, oh, we're not objectively great. able yeah, to... Perfect. To that's just what I've always needed, is a poll to determine whether I'm hotter than my brother. Fish asks, dance montage? Alex Sands is the best ones in the world. Do you have pizza on Thanksgiving? No, we, we have, have normal turkey. Thanksgiving. Yeah, maybe someday we'll have turkey pizza. Favorite kind of pie? Pumpkin. Pumpkin, also. It's a problem because there's only one pumpkin pie. Is there? This Thanksgiving. <laughs> Almost like the Hunger Games. <laughs> in that one of us is going to be hungry and the other of us is going to be dead. If John was a turkey and he was the last turkey on Earth, would you eat him for Thanksgiving? No. I mean, are there other foods available? Could I have a ham? But also, if John were a turkey, I probably wouldn't think very highly of you. I'm just amused by the idea that anyone, no matter who the turkey was, would eat the last turkey on Earth for Thanksgiving. <laughs> There's only one turkey left, and it is Thanksgiving. It's like when we found the last Ivory Bill Woodpecker and it's be like, well, who's gonna get to eat this? <laughs> Did you do drawings of one another? Yeah. I did mine. It's sparkle pen paper. What do you think? Um, yeah, I've always wanted a Hank with fish earring. I drew Hank as well. Um, I drew him as a beaver playing the guitar. What's the worst kind of candy? I think the worst kind of candy is probably a candy none of us have ever heard of because the person who created it was like, well, that clearly is poo. One time, uh, I went to a contemporary art performance at which the artist, who was Chinese, handed out hard candy that tasted like crabs. That <laughs> was very bad candy. This person just says bad jokes. I'd tell you a physics joke, but it, you'd probably find it boring. But, you know, jokes about Dorian Gray. They never get old. Is DFTBA.com doing anything for Black Friday? Are we? Heck yes! There is $3 shipping on all orders. No matter how much you order, you will get it for just $3 shipping. Even international. What? If you have friends and family who are looking for Christmas presents for you, maybe there's something you want to let them know about. How do you make a really good Project for Awesome video? The key to a good Project for Awesome video is not just like sitting in front of a camera and talking about why a charity is important to you, but actually showing it at work. And also consider the fact that you're basically pitching a charity. You have to let people know why this is important, why it's a big deal, why it's important to you personally. Yeah, the best Project for Awesome videos are also videos that the charities themselves can then use yeah. in their own outreach to their donors. We love it when that happens, and we hope that it happens a lot this year. Have y'all always been really close? No, I mean, we've always liked each other, though. Mm. Thank you for watching! <laughs> Best wishes. DFTBA John, I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye. Good morning, Hank. It's Saturday, August 3rd, 2013, which means that it's Esther Day, the day that in memory of our great friend Esther, we say I love you not to the people we're romantically involved with, which is easy enough, but to the people it's sometimes harder to say I love you to, friends and family. So, <sighs> I love you, Hank. I love you too. Oh, thanks, buddy. So for those of you who don't know, Esther Earl was a nerd fighter that we met at the first LeagueCon. Who we met? Who we met? Who we met? That we met. Yeah. Who? So for those of you who don't know, Esther Earl was a nerd fighter who we met in. I almost said it again. So for those of you who don't know, Esther Earl was a nerd fighter that. 
That's just how we talk now. No, it's not. I know. I refuse to accept <laughs> the proliferation of that when one means who. Esther Earl was a nerdfighter we met at LeakyCon in 2009 in Boston, where you really played your first, like, major yeah. concert. Uh-huh. Yeah, I sold my first CDs ever. <laughs> and look at you now! Still selling CDs out of the back of your trunk. <laughs> Esther was a dear friend to us and a really important nerd fighter. She died in 2010 when she was just 16, but we remember her on this day and every day by trying to spread her message of love. What a great thing to say when asked what you want people to do. I know. In your memory. I know. I said to Esther, uh, we're going to do this holiday for you. It's going to be called Esther Day. It's going to be on your birthday. As long as we make Vlogbrothers videos, what do you want it to be about? And that's what she wanted it to be about. She wanted it to be about love between family and friends. So a Valentine's Day for the rest of love. And I think that's pretty awesome. So uh, Esther, we miss you. Nerdfighters, happy Esther Day. Thank you for being awesome. Hank, I love you. Soak it up. You won't hear it again for 365 days. Love you too. Best wishes. Good morning, John. Good morning, Hank. It's, it's Friday. Friday. Question Tuesday. <laughs> the day that we answer real, real questions, questions from, from real nerd, nerd fighters. fighters. Are there any foods that you wish were more readily available in the U.S.? <laughs> no, we've got all the major foods here. My major one is paprika Pringles. Oh. You know what I will say? My wife is a huge fan of hot nuts. Sarah will plan trips to Mexico and then she will come home with like 400 pounds of hot nuts. And then when you're crossing through customs, do you Are have any food? And she's like, no, I mean, I don't think of hot nuts as food exactly. We have this beautiful house and Hank chose the single corner of the house that is covered in flies. And I when, mean, I, when I mentioned this to him, he was like, but I already set it up here. Hi. I'm a big fan. Oh, oh, thanks, wow. man. Hi, <laughs> our next door neighbor likes our work. I just saw you guys. Oh, that's so cool. Well, you'll see this again next week. That's gonna make it in. I wanna ask Hank another- Ah, oh, bee! You okay there? I don't like bees. That's all Henry has nightmares about is bees. He'll have a nightmare and I'll be like, what'd you dream about? He'll just say bees. bees. Good, it's a healthy, healthy fear. <laughs> now that filming The Fault in Our Stars in Pittsburgh has started, it hasn't, it doesn't start until August 26th, will you be coming to Amsterdam? People seem to think that the movie is being made by me. I am just the author of a book. However, I think it's gonna be a very good movie. Are you missing a tooth? Yeah, I am missing a tooth. Thanks for asking. I had like really terrible chronic pain ever since before Brotherhood 2.0. Finally, they had to remove it and do a very complicated and painful surgery. Fortunately, it does not hurt anymore. Has Alice done a nerdfighter salute yet? Alice is one month old. She has not made any intentional gestures of any kind yet. Uh, she's more of like... Yeah. Henry read in a Berenstein Bears book that sometimes baby sisters bop you on the nose, so he's always like getting his nose right down next to her arm and waiting, and then and then sometimes she'll just involuntarily, and it'll be, he did it, she did it! She <laughs> bopped me on the nose! That's the answer to the question, what's the most adorable story you have ever? Hank, what is your favorite game of all time? The Game of Thrones. <laughs> I knew it! How do I stop feeling like I'm not doing anything with my life? There was this guy who is now in prison, his name is Larry Langford, and he was the mayor of my, uh, quasi hometown of Birmingham, Alabama, and when he ran for mayor, his motto was, let's do something. And it turns <laughs> out that just doing something is a terrible, terrible idea. You don't need to focus on doing something, you need to focus on doing good things, even like very little good things, like doing nice favors for people you like or something. I like that. Do you know how dirty your glasses are? Oh man! What is something surprising you've learned today? Uh, uh, yeah, flies. I learned that Hank likes to set up the camera in places that are covered in flies. They tickle. No, I did learn something today. I learned that the whole Chinese monopoly on world silk trade ended when two guys, two monks, smuggled, like, seven silkworms or something out of China and took them to the Byzantine Empire, which, like, completely rewrote history. Hank, how do you feel about cucumbers? Uh, they give me gas. Yeah. For me, they're just like a step on the way to a pickle, which I hate. It's an unruined pickle. <laughs> I don't love it, but I certainly like it better than a pickle. Would you ever consider writing a book with a pen name? That's a good question. Haven't I? Oh! I don't, I haven't, I don't I haven't, think so. I haven't, I haven't. What's your biggest pet peeve? Oh god, freaking flies. flies! If time travel were possible, where would you go and why? to the present because antibiotics. And when, John, will you be back from not, paternity leave? Not this next Tuesday when you will see my secret sister Maureen, although she might be me, but the following <laughs> Tuesday, I think it is July 30th. We look forward to seeing you then. I look forward to seeing you guys too. <laughs> 
I'll see you on July 30th. And now. Oh my god, July 30th is like a day from VidCon. Bum, bum, bum. Ah. Good morning, John. I have very much enjoyed our family vacation here in sunny, steamy Florida. All of the people and the scenery and this squirrel. Just gotta talk a little bit while this squirrel is extremely adorable. Oh, it's, what? It's so oh my god. Of course, one of the best things about any trip like this is hanging out with you. And so, here's some footage of that. So yesterday, Hank and I discovered this new game. Uh, Table Topics. It's not actually a game. They did not sponsor us. No, in fact, that's why we don't do product placement, is so that you can know that, like, the corporate behemoth that is Table Topics yeah, is not responsible for today's video. They also, Table Topics, uh, is actually owned by ExxonMobil. Is it really? No. Delicious ExxonMobil <laughs> oil. Good to the last drop. I'm practicing trying to, uh, Right, yeah, we gotta get good at this a, stuff. Be a pitch man. Diet Dr. Pepper. Tastes just as bad as regular <laughs> right, Dr. Pepper. Right, right. Or Dr. Pepper 10, it's not for women, it's for, apparently, misogynists. <laughs> Table Topics wants to know, do you live more in the past, the present, or the future? I live entirely in the present. Like people do. Is that a question <laughs> intended to suss out Time Lords? Um, where they'll be I like, oh, you, I've been caught. What quality do you think is most important in marriage? In end marriage? And <laughs> what, what quality do I think is most important in ending marriage? I don't know, cheating? What a depressing question. In. In Most marriage. In <laughs> Mutual generosity. Oh, that's very sweet. That's true. John, what's your dream job? Oh, I have this crazy fantasy where I get to make video blogs with my brother and write novels. I mean, I have my dream job. What about you? Same. I'm the same, I'm except for... Well, but you have like a yeah. million jobs. Your dream job is to have all the jobs. All the jobs! Congratulations, you've done it. Also, that is going to be gif. I'll just get out and then you just doing all the jobs. Ah, my belly's all still the in. Things. My belly's That's still good because it'll repeat and it'll just be you squeezing. Oh, that is going to be great. That's going to be the gif. What one question would you ask a psychic? How they live with themselves <laughs> knowing that their profession is a lie. If it was a proven real psychic, yeah. I'd be like, tell me the stock market. That's a very sophisticated financial question, Hank. Tell me the stock market? <laughs> it's not even a question, it's just a statement. Tell me the stock market is a sentence that ends with a period. It's not, it's a fragment of a sentence. I guess it would end more with Shut a semicolon up. or something. John, if money were no object, what kind of party would you throw and where? If money were no object, I wouldn't throw a party. I would, I would throw VidCon. Even <laughs> better. I like to be by myself. Only my family would no, be No, I had a new, I have a new answer. Okay. I would throw a party on Mars. If money were no object. Here, let me ask you a few. Hank, if you could be a famous athlete, who would you be? This is going to challenge Hank's ability to name an athlete. <laughs> Harry Potter is a... He's a pretty good Quidditch player. He never went pro. No, he had other things to do. What's the most significant problem facing the world? Farts. <laughs> Henry, what is the most significant problem facing the world today? Hank thinks it's farts. Is it the, the lack of naps? I heard a garbage truck. You heard a garbage truck? I didn't. Hank, if you owned a boat, what would you choose to name it? The Dark Time Bad Wolf. Hank, which piece of land would you wish to have preserved forever? Well, forever is an incorrect concept. Can I preserve it from the explosion of the sun? Hank, what do you miss about childhood? Dexter, my ferret. This was a stuffed ferret, for the record. <laughs> what remains undone that you have wanted to get done for years? For years? Yeah, for me it's lipo. The elimination of death. <laughs> I've been meaning to get to that. <laughs> Hank, what one goal do you hope to accomplish this year? I hope this year to put an end to all suffering. I would like to do a it's couple hard. cool projects with Nerdfighteria, <laughs> so I see that we work on somewhat different scales. <laughs> Hank, thanks for playing Table Topics with me. I yes. will see you on right now. Good morning, Hank, it's Tuesday, and here I am in beautiful Florida. And here I am in beautiful Florida. What, it's a reunion we video! It never gets old. <laughs> it never does get old. I still find this funny. <laughs> I don't know if they do. Ah, it's very hot! Hot, hot, sand, hot, 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 So Hank and I are at a family reunion in Seaside, Florida, the world capital of teenagers who don't know who we are. What's it like? Well, it's been like this, basically. I got these for Henry, but they were too big. Hi, John. What are you reading? Endymion. Nerd. Yeah. I did it. You got the piggies. You got the piggies.
You, and you got one whole star. So Hank, we're here in northern Florida, and yes, I'm wearing an inner tube that just sticks to my body because, you know, my belly is too big. You don't need a bigger tube. <laughs> it's all the tube you need. Yeah. It's just like the internet. How is it just like the internet? We just always want bigger tubes. You know, in these Thoughts and Places videos, I always try to draw out some tortured metaphor, but that's the worst one yet. <laughs> <laughs> Noodle attack! Do not! Do not shake your hair this close to the camera, Justin Bieber. It burns, doesn't it burn? It burns. Yes! <laughs> Hank, you're the younger brother, but your marriage continues to be an inspiration to me. I'll see you on Friday. Neck pillow. Good morning, John! Oh, God, please! It's Friday! Oh, God, I had four hours of sleep last night. All I want you to do is record a very quiet video. It's a simple request. We are now in Arizona. Oh, wait, we're going across the river. We are now in California. We're actually still in Arizona. We are? Now, now we're in California. California. We are at the Jesus Christ is Lord Travel Center. You are wearing a neck pillow. I'm wearing my neck pillow still. <laughs> yes, yes, there's a little something on your face, Catherine. <laughs> it's the bun of sin. still in this car. <laughs> John, I'm here today with number one New York Times best-selling author of The Fault in Our Stars, John Green. Hi, Hank. I'm so tired. <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> How does it feel to be number one? I mean, it's ridiculous. I love the Fighteria so much. I mean, I, I would like to take credit for it, but it is it has nothing to do with me. It is kind of cool that you could have written a, like a really horrible book. I would have pre-ordered it, and well, then they would have got it and been like, oh my god, this I is know. crap. But I instead, you wrote an amazing book. Uh, Love Grossman in I, Time Magazine true, said true. that you were damn near genius. Near. Well, how does that feel, near? <laughs> to be near to genius, how does that feel, John? I don't know, you tell me. As John says in the shows, um, my greatest accomplishment is being your brother. That's my favorite joke in the show. I love it! Yeah. That and the fact that almost every night you get shocked instead of me. You're very empathic, as you said last night. <laughs> I was nervous! I said empathic when I meant empathetic. Um, I also am empathic, though. What word am I thinking of? Um... Moist. You're right! I did! I'm so You were totally right! Moist! He's always thinking of moist. <laughs> what do you do uh, when you're backstage before a show to get to get ready? Um, I mostly just sit and watch you play the same Chameleon Circuit song over and over and over again. It's I'm very nervous, and that's it's one of the only things that makes me not nervous. Well, you know what, what would make me less nervous is if you were practicing the songs you are going to play. Uh, oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> Oh, the glory of it all. Our interview is nearing its end because John has a hamburger. Thanks for interviewing me. Any final words for the, the people of my audience? <laughs> I hope you guys like the Fault in Our Stars and thanks for being awesome. John, I'll see you when you wake up. In case you're wondering how we spend the moments before we go on stage. We didn't get any purchase on it for some reason. It's disgusting. <laughs> I want to end this call. Oh, come on. This is there. Good morning Hank, it's Tuesday. So funny story, last night the tour to Nerdfighting was in Houston, we had a great time and after we got done signing it was like midnight and we went to the hotel and they told us that they had accidentally sold our rooms and they were very sorry. I was pretty cranky because I really wanted to go to bed but then we had to go to a different hotel and walking into the other hotel I could tell it was kind of nice and then the guy behind the counter was like, we've reserved one of our best rooms for you and I was like, whatever, I just want to go to- Oh. My. God. Armoire. More like. I'm awesome. I mean, Hank, this place is literally bigger than my house. I'm not even sure that I can sit in all the chairs. The deep sea dwelling in Lurkin never has to find a mate. They are always there together when it's time to procreate.
creates He one dark night, a young that bites the female on her side And then slowly he becomes a sperm-producing parasite And if we could say he lives it all, he lives until she dies And until that day he literally never leaves her side Yeah, you can hate the night If you lived your whole life without light, you can hate the dish You've only ever eaten fish and you can't feel alone We just noticed this is an actual Picasso print Pretty unbelievable. There's like it's not even nailed down. <laughs> <laughs> I love how the things in this hotel are not nailed down. You could just take it. <laughs> There's a certificate of authenticity. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my. Seated God. woman, author Pablo Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> Hank, you're holding a Picasso while eating Pringles. First. <laughs> You're retiring and becoming a professional art thief. No more tour to nerd fighting for you. This is really easy. I never thought art thievery would be so easy. All of which goes to show you, Hank, that sometimes disasters can turn out armoisome. I'll see you on Friday. And by Friday, I mean right now, because you're holding the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Hank. Good morning, John. It is Wednesday. I'm not really in a mood to make a proper video. Here's yeah. my flowers uncle Mike here for you guys. is bringing us flowers. Oh, thanks, Uncle That's Mike. That's very sweet. Uh, however, we are going to play a game of word association today, and then you're going to continue the game in comments. I'm going to start now. Lemon. Pie. Meringue. Mushroom. <laughs> what is... Pizza. Corn dog. Uh, hot dogs. Dachshund. Uh, poop in the Nintendo! <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, Mario. Um, Luigi. Princess. Catherine. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> sweet! Uh, peppermint. Um, uh, minty. Um, Mitt Romney. <laughs> Politician. George Bush. Rich people. <laughs> Mountain Brook. <laughs> that's, that's where we are right now. Um, country clubs. Golf. Clubs. Um, disco. <laughs> Balls. <laughs> Back to golf. Back to golf and, and disco. It's just beautiful. In a loop. Just beautiful uh, disco, disco golf ball. balls. Disco golf ball loop. Yes. Somebody right now is, is making disco golf balls on Tumblr. I don't know why they, they should be selling those on Etsy right now. Yeah, they will be. Don't okay, worry. I will buy one. DFTBA.com. Now available for pre order. Disco, disco golf, golf balls. balls. Not really. Not really. But you can get a Pizza John shirt. Um, basket. Um, weaving. Um, underwater. <laughs> Uh, swimming. Uh, scuba. Um, acronyms that are actually... That's, a lot of, that's not a word. Acronyms. There you go. Initialism. <laughs> DFTBA. Awesome. Um, Hank. Aww. Aww. George Washington. Is what Hank reminds <laughs> me of. <laughs> I remind myself of George Washington. I don't know if you've ever known. I'm a really good general. Obelisks. Ah. Uh, phallus. No, 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 it's just all balls and phalluses today, <laughs> here. Where am I supposed to go from phallus? What is that supposed to make me think of? Um, Greek, or possibly Latin. <laughs> Socrates. <laughs> I mean, he is either Greek or Latin. I know, from sure crash, I know from Crash Course. <laughs> you will soon find out, my friend, in episode three of Crash Course. Um, Socrates makes me think of hemlock. Uh, makes me think of pine. Makes me think of sap. Turpentine. Uh, makes me think of that turpentiny smell. That's not, that's not that a word. That is a word. It's a it's smell. All, that turpentiny smell. Marble. Um, Venice. Italy. Mm, corruption. Berlusconi. <laughs> <laughs> Sex with 17 year old girls. <laughs> that's all. Oh. Not a word. <laughs> also, also, not a word. <laughs> not a word. Did you ever see the headline of The Economist with Silvio Berlusconi? And it just said, the, the headline uh, on the cover was, The Man Who Screwed an Entire Country. 
So, uh, we're gonna stop there, and you're going to start at Silvio Berlusconi. Hey, Chief! Oh, a dog! It's a doggy! So, the, the job now is that in comments, no, you, no, 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 no. the nerd fighters, will continue our game of word association. Say hi to Chief. <laughs> Best wishes. Good morning, John. It's Wednesday. Ah! Oh. Oh, chair wars! You say it's Wednesday? It's question Wednesday, the day that I answer real questions from real nerd fighters. Number one, what was your biggest childhood argument? I think that you lying is the problem, where you, where something would happen, you would lie, and I would get blamed, because you were a better liar than I was. You're still a much better liar than I am. I'm a novelist. <laughs> it's like my job. How come you guys never come to Ireland or even mention it? Uh, mentioned. Done. Would you rather have a unicorn or a pegasus? A pegasus. Obviously. Really? No. Yes, no. it has wings. But if you had a unicorn, you could kill it. But you could kill the Pegasus too if you wanted to. You can ride a unicorn and it's like, a, it's just a freaking horse. It's like, would you rather have a horse or a flying horse? Is it possible that the giant squid of anger and the Sarlacc from Star Wars share an evolutionary link? No, it's not. Because that happened in a galaxy far, far away and there's no way to transmit genetic material between galaxies. It's also a long time ago. Right. That's not, that's not as big of a problem. It's more the far, far away. Yeah. Why does the internet love bacon so much? Because bacon is delicious. Yeah, bacon is good for me. Do you ever see those, uh, those, those anti-piracy ads that are like, you wouldn't download bacon? And I'm like, yes I would. <laughs> it's possible. Is that, is that a thing? Like, we can download <laughs> bacon? <laughs> does it come out of my printer? <laughs> What's your favorite thing about each other? I like this part. <laughs> totally creepy. <laughs> it just inspired a, a very unfortunate generation of fan fiction writers. I think there's gonna be a Facebook fan page for this part. <laughs> What's up? I was giving them some of that part. Oh. So that they could make it make their screen found count. something up on my ceiling no. that oh, I should know about. Look at that. Why are you have Kermit up there? He's just, you know, my household god. I mean when I have that's where I have Padre Pio. I have a Roman Catholic saint and you have Kermit. <laughs> I figured Padre Pio was a soccer player. <laughs> Just assumed. Have you seen the new modernized version of Sherlock Holmes? Are we talking about the Cumberbatch one or the the Downey Jr. one? Because the Cumberbatch I've seen both. the Cumberbatch one, two thumbs up. Yes. The Downey Jr. one, one thumb. Yeah. Like, See, we don't, we disagree. don't disagree. We don't disagree. Arm wrestling match. Arm wrestling match. One, two, three. I give up, I give up. Oh, oh. Do you guys go back and watch your old videos? That implies that we've ever watched an old video. <laughs> I never watched. You never watched Brother 2.0? I've never seen the show. I really enjoy watching the old videos, particularly your old videos. When I watch my old videos, I'm pretty hard on myself. It's funny because I like to watch my old videos too. Right? <laughs> I'm like, that guy's so funny, oh my god. Why do you do the things you do? Wouldn't it be easier to just play games all day? What is the point of doing things in general? Oh, that's it. What is the point of doing things in general? Well, there is no reason to do things. There's no like cosmic mandate to do stuff. I feel bad for that person do because you? I've struggled with that a lot. Right. In fact, I wrote a novel about it called The Fault in Our Stars. It's uh, available at a link below. All copies will be signed. <laughs> Since there isn't, as you said, a cosmic mandate to do things, you know, there isn't a cosmic mandate to make stuff and the world probably won't be any different as a result of the stuff that you make or do. I think it's human nature. I think that we have a human nature to like to do stuff and interact with people and, and to make the world better for each other. I yeah. think that we like doing that. Yeah, making stuff is very fulfilling in and of itself in a way Maybe that if it's like video making a garden bed or if it's making, I mean, even, you know, video games are set up to do that. They're set up to satisfy that need. Right. Uh, but they can also become kind of insular. Right, no, I mean, they're set up to satisfy that need in a very shallow way. We love making awesome stuff with awesome people. That's what we've always loved, and we feel very lucky to be part of a community where that stuff happens. I'm gonna turn that right there into a song. Are you? I'm gonna song Is it, it gonna be called Making Awesome Stuff with Awesome People? Oh, you're gonna songify me? I'm no, gonna I'm... sing on key for once? I can't act, I do not have that technology. <laughs> John, thank you for doing my first Question Tuesday ever with me. It's been a privilege. And I will see you right now. I will continue to see you. Stop looking at me. Good morning, Hank. It's Monday. Using the magical power of green screens, I have transported myself to your home office in Missoula, Montana to show you something that has been annoying the crap out of me. Let's go to the tape. You're making a nice video blog. It's funny. Everybody's laughing. There! There! Enhance! There! That thing! Oh, it's so annoying! Hank, it's Gladys. She has to go. She's annoying me. If only this weren't a green screen. Oh, wait, it's not! Goodbye, Gladys. Uh-oh! The illustrated guide to free hugs just broke. Everything is fine. That's like my favorite thing. Nothing is broken. Look, a tank! Ow! Wow! <laughs> okay. That was unnecessary. This is a sliding chair. You didn't change the poster. 
Oh, sorry, I can fix that. Bam, done. This is, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a bit ob obnoxious. <laughs> is it? Is, is, that, <laughs> is that too forward? I don't know what happens if you go to that link. <laughs> so I flew all the way to Montana so I could be in a Hank Games it's video? Hank and John play FIFA 11. Poorly. Very badly. <laughs> Man. Oh, when you get to the penalty kicks, that's the second episode. Uh, yeah. Stay tuned for tomorrow when you will see us miss 19 consecutive penalties. <laughs> Um, but we played uh, perhaps the worst match that Liverpool and uh, Arsenal have ever played. Yes, hold on a second. Heck! <laughs> <laughs> you can watch it right there at youtube.com slash Hank Games. You should make that a clickable link. There is also a link in the dupe we do. And also in the future I'm going to be making more Hank Games videos with Hank, which I'm really excited about because uh, I'm really bad at video games, but I'm really passionate about them. It's the same <laughs> way I felt about skateboarding when I was 10. Another thing, I have a punishment. Um, and I can't do the sandwich punishment. Because, do you want to show them your scars? Not really. Okay. <laughs> you just have to trust me that I was lately removed from my gallbladder. <laughs> really, your gallbladder got the worst part of that deal. That's true. I wrote a haiku for the occasion, actually. Oh. Would, would you like to hear it? Yes, please. <clears throat> Stupid gallbladder, not performing properly. I will kill you now! Yeah. So my gallbladder was taken out, which means I can't really do the sandwich punishment, so if you could suggest a different punishment for me, I would appreciate it. And Hank will pick one. In other news, we do have a punishment for Hank. So in addition to bringing myself and my family to Montana, I also brought one box full of sheets from the Fault in Our Stars. Which is 7,400 sheets. And that is 5% of the total. And I'm going to Hanklerfish all of them. Hanklerfish? I'm going to Hanklerfish them. <laughs> I'm going to ride an anglerfish on each one of those pieces of paper, which means you'll have a 5% chance of getting a hanglerfished fault in our stars. <laughs> it's a verb. <laughs> it's an, it's an, I made up a word and I verbed it. I just verbed verb. So a hanglerfish is, is an anglerfish drawn by a hank. Yeah, uh-huh. There are other hanks that can make hanglerfish. <laughs> so like if Hank Williams III were to draw me an anglerfish, that would be a hanglerfish? It would be also be a hanglerfish. <laughs> It would probably be better than mine, too. So, I had to bring all these copies of The Fault in Our Stars because I can't take a week off from signing. Right, he has to sign them anyways. He, has to, he had to bring them to sign them. Uh, yeah, just in case you don't know, by the way, everybody who pre-orders The Fault in Our Stars uh, will get a signed book. Hold on a second. All pre-ordered copies will be signed. And 5% will be Hanklerfish. Alright, uh, we've got to go to breakfast. Nerd fighters, don't forget to be awesome. Best wishes. Don't talk about my shirt or I'll put forks in you. What is that from? It's from a really old Vlogbrothers video. I mean, I... I Ta Ning, Ning Master Tom made this. We have so many inside jokes that I don't even get. <laughs> it's been a long... It's been a long Don't run. talk to me about my t-shirt or I will put forks in you. That's a great t-shirt, actually. I know. We should make... That should be a thing. Well, I kind of like me having the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Hank, I'll goodbye. see you when I turn off the camera. Okay. Good morning, Hank. It's Wednesday. As you can tell from the gray speckled wall behind me, I'm in an airport. I also had a colonoscopy yesterday, and for lack of a better word, I'm still feeling kind of crappy. So good news, people who haven't yet read the first six chapters of The Great Gatsby. You have an extension until Monday. Okay, hold on. I gotta get on a plane. And now I'm at Hogwarts. Hank, there are a lot of nerd fighters downstairs at LeakyCon 2011 right now, and I feel kind of bad because they all want to take pictures, and I want to take pictures too, but I have this crippling social anxiety disorder that makes it impossible for me to do that kind of thing, or to hug strangers, or whatever. And I feel I just ah, I feel guilty. In other news, Hank, you know that album you've been working on for a year and a half, Ellen Hardcastle, which you named after a nerd fighter who won a project for Awesome Raffle. Anyway, Hank, I don't know when it comes out, but I'm really excited. Well, it comes out today. Hank. Hi. Ah, it's Hank. So Ellen Hardcastle is out today. Yes. It is. It's available now, and I've got a big box of them downstairs that I have not looked at yet. Congratulations. It has awesome cover art, which you're looking at now instead of Hank's face. Sorry, Hank's face. So yesterday we were talking about how, uh, you know, I'm signing every pre-ordered copy of The Fault in Our Stars. And I thought that wasn't enough. So I've decided that instead of doing that for Ellen Hardcastle, I'm going to let you say whatever you want me to say in a video. You are such a brother! Like, every, I have a good idea, and every, then you have to have a better idea. Every, every person who buys a physical copy of Ellen Hardcastle, you are going to be able to send me a 10-word script for a video, and I'm going to film that video and then put it onto YouTube. 
It's unfair. I mean, I thought it was a nice I was doing. I'm going to make thousands of ten word videos. I was doing such. There are rules. I can't. It cannot be profane. It has to be in English, and it has to make sense. Oh look, what those people are doing is something I would never do. So if you want your own Vlogbrothers video with Hank Green saying ten words of your choosing, as long as they're not profane and they make sense. You can just buy a copy of Ellen Hardcastle and then you'll get an email with instructions about how to proceed. dft.ba slash Ellen Hardcastle. Or possibly not. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it may be dft.ba slash Hardcastle. I don't know. How awesome is it that you named that album after a nerd fighter who donated the Project for Awesome and her name happened to be Ellen, Ellen Hardcastle. Hardcastle? Anything else? There are good songs on Ellen Hardcastle. All right, the music. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's good. It has such hits as... Phineas Gage! And Strange Charm, the best song ever written about quarks. Admittedly low bar, but it exceeds it by a lot. <laughs> Other hits include Shake a Booty, which you probably haven't heard yet, but it's one of my favorite songs ever. And there's lots of songs that you haven't heard, and there's other songs. Catherine, what are the other songs? We had Catherine hiding in the bathroom. <laughs> like Fermi Paradox? Fermi Paradox? Fermi Paradox, the best song ever written about the Fermi Paradox. <laughs> it's true! That's true, it's totally, no, I completely agree. I mean, you dominate, you know, little known scientific phenomena songs about. <laughs> I want that to be on my next Hank Green t-shirt. Hank Green, dominating Dominates. little known scientific phenomena, comma, songs about. <laughs> I have to go to rehearsal now. DFTBA. Hank? I will see you as soon as I turn off this video. Good morning, John. It's Friday. Good morning, Hank. It is indeed Friday. Yes! That was a poor oh, high, five. high five. Poor. Today's video comes to you in three parts. Part one. An announcement. Part two. A challenge. And part three. Another announcement. That is different from the first announcement. Part one. An announcement. The 2010 Project for Awesome is happening. It's on. You might remember in 2007 when John and I kind of realized that Nerdfighteria had become a pretty big deal and we wanted to do something with the power that Nerdfighteria wields. We decided to take over YouTube and for one day YouTube would not be about kittens on Roombas or about giraffe love. It would be about charity. And now for three years straight we've been doing this very successfully and it's been getting bigger and bigger every year. This year it's going to be the biggest it has ever been. By far. There's going to be a huge, epic live show out of Los Angeles. We just got off the phone with YouTube. So YouTube is basically giving us the same kind of treatment that like Conan O'Brien and the president gets, where they're doing a four hour live stream on YouTube. So there's going to be this big live show, but there'll also be, sorry. Ah! But there's also going to be traditional Project for Awesome stuff, which means that hopefully all of you will upload amazing Project for Awesome videos on December 17th. The thing to do is to show us charities you care about in action. And I know this might sound weird, but it might involve you getting out of your chair. You might have to leave your bedroom, and that's not something either Hank or I enjoy, mm. and we are sympathetic to the fact that it's no fun for you, but if it makes for a better Project for Awesome video, it therefore makes for a better universe, and so... Get out there. So we're giving you some lead time this time. You have three weeks before December 17th to plan and execute your video. And we'll be announcing more things in the future to give you some... That was very eloquent <laughs> at the end, particularly. I, I'm moved. And we'll be giving you more details as time goes on, like the thumbnail and the logo and the websites and etc. And for those of you who don't know much about the Project for Awesome, you'll find videos here, 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 and here. And you'll also find some videos in the doobly-doo. Part two, a challenge. We would like to challenge you, Nerdfighteria. Last night at dinner, Hank and I were discussing pasta. Pasta and beef. Everyone knows that it is far more efficient in terms of energy output to create pasta than it is to create beef, and that remains true even even if you import the pasta from, say, Italy? But we were wondering, would this remain true if you were importing the pasta from somewhere farther away, say, like the moon? Like space. So what we want to know is, is it more efficient to fly Apollo 11 to the moon, pick up a load of pasta, fill up the capsule entirely, and then ship it back? Would it then be more energy intensive than growing a cow per calorie? That is our question. We hope that there are some of you who are nerdy and smart enough to give us an accurate answer. Because we couldn't figure it out. No. So we are turning to you because you never disappoint us. 
Nerdfighteria, if you successfully determine for us whether moon pasta is more efficient than earth beef, then we will allow you to challenge us to do something horrible. Part three! The final announcement is that you may have noticed that it is Black Friday. So in the spirit of the holidays, DFTBA Records is lowering prices on some new shirts and some old favorites. Are you putting I was trying to, but your head was too high. The new shirts are the Giraffe Love shirt. Why are the shirts on my face? Because that's where they go. Two new DFTBA shirts, which we're calling the DFTBA University shirts. And the Giant Squid of Anger shirt, designed by amazing nerdfighter Von Del Swain. <laughs> All right, so quick recap. DFTBA.com slash sale for all of your t-shirt needs. Is it more efficient to have moon pasta or earth burgers and... A project for awesome, December 17th. Get ready and be awesome. DFTBA Nerdfighters, he'll see you on Monday. I guess I'm Teller now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, this is John Green. And I'm Hank Green, and we are the Vlog Brothers on YouTube. And we are making this video a frequently asked questions video for the purposes of answering some questions that are frequently asked. People are often confused. Like, for example, what is a nerd fighter? A nerd fighter is a person who, instead of being made out of like bones and skin and tissue, is made entirely of awesome. So you're saying that nerd fighters don't fight nerds? No, we're clearly. Pro nerd. Nerdfighter is basically just the community that sprung up around our videos, and basically we just get together and try to do awesome things and have a good time and fight against World Suck. What's World Suck? World Suck is kind of exactly what World Suck sounds like. It's hard to quantify exactly, but you know, it's like the amount of suck in the world. One of the questions we get asked the most is, do you guys have real jobs? Yes! Well, I mean, it depends on how you define real. Hank runs the environmental technology website EcoGeek. John Green is an award-winning author. He has written books such as Looking for Alaska and Abundance of Catherines and Paper Towns, and he's won many awards, including the Edgar Award and the, the Prince Award. Why don't you blink? I don't blink because I'm focusing when I'm in front of the camera. I do blink in real life. That's why I still have eyes. And also, it's sort of a tribute to the original video blogger, our hero, Zay Frank. So Hank, what's DFTBA? DFTBA is an acronym. No, it isn't. It is not an acronym. Acronyms are pronounceable. It is an initialism. Diftba. <laughs> okay. It's an initialism that stands for don't forget to be awesome. Am I too young, old, fat, skinny, weird, cool, nerdy, handsome, tall, dead to, to be, be a nerd fighter? fighter? No. If you want to be a nerd fighter, you are a nerd fighter. It's nerd fighter dictionary time. Lightning round. Puppy-sized elephants. We asked natural selection to make us puppy-sized elephants because they would have the evolutionary advantage of being adorable, and we are waiting for that to happen. Stuff on heads? Yeah, if you put stuff on your head, it makes you feel better about life. Nerdfighter gatherings? Is when nerdfighters get together. Sometimes we're there, sometimes we're not. French the llama. French the llama is something that John is trying to make into a thing in which people say, French the llama, that whale is big! But it's not gonna work. So. Oh, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna make French the llama happen. Puff levels. Uh, my puff level is the level of puff in my hair, which gets higher as I get more stressed out. Decepticon? Is the opposite of a nerd fighter. Giant squid of anger? It's basically like a YouTube troll. <laughs> tiny chicken disease? It is a disease that happens when there's tiny chickens in your head and they lay eggs and all of it goos out of your nose. It's actually... It's a common cold. Yeah. Secret siblings? Secret siblings are anyone who makes video responses down here to our videos. Down here. In my pants. <laughs> in your pants. In your pants is a phenomenon discovered by Maureen Johnson. If you add in your pants to the end of book titles, those book titles become much funnier. The sun also rises in your pants. A spot of bother in your pants. Notsum. Notsum is the opposite of awesome. See also fail puppy and the fail boat. The Yeti. Is my wife. The Catherine. Is my wife. Oh, and this. Ah, is the Nerdfighter gang sign. So if you see somebody doing this, you know that not to shoot them. We have created a playlist of 20 Vlogbrothers videos that you can watch that will give you a broader sense of what's going on in Nerdfighteria, in case you're new. And if you have any friends that are a little bit confused about why you're watching two nerds make videos about Star Wars and giraffe love and making the world a better place through video, <laughs> those, those are three interconnected ideas. <laughs> then you can send them to this video right here so that they can get a little bit of a debrief before plunging in to the rest of our stuff. Now the playlist is on the screen, and we gotta do like yeah. a little playlist song. <laughs> Now, did you just write that? Because that's really good. Oh, good morning, God. Willie. Do you guys want to see a trick? Panic! I'm a bad person. <laughs> You're going to be a great father. It's okay, 
Run for your life! <laughs> uh, good morning, Hank. Good morning, John. Today we're gonna talk about Christmas. Cause it's Christmas time! It's almost Christmas time. I feel like the holiday season is upon us, like literally, like, like it is preying upon us. It is latched on like a zombie. Yes. Controlling our every movement. It certainly controlled my movements in the last 48 hours because all <laughs> I've done is buy stuff. Willie, I'm sorry about the panic. He doesn't care. He's forgotten about it. Yeah, that's the great thing about having a dog. It's a great thing about having a stupid dog. Poor Willie. He's so beautiful, <laughs> but he's so stupid. Willie, will you be in the thumbnail? Uh, uh, thumbnail. thumbnail. Hank and I are both huge fans of the Christmas season. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. I hate it. I love it. I usually hate it, but this year I've gotten more into it because we're expecting our first kid and you're here and Catherine's here and mom and dad are here and we've got this beautiful Christmas tree. Because I'm so into Christmas this year, I thought that it would be appropriate to talk some Christmas facts. Gesticulation now! What was the first state to recognize Christmas as an official holiday in the United States? I think it was Alabama. It's almost like I already told you this fact and you're cheating. But when, John, when? In 1838, the state of Alabama declared Christmas a state holiday. Christmas did not become a national holiday in the United States until 1870, so for almost the first 100 years of our union, Christmas was not considered a national holiday. But early in American history, there were fewer national holidays. Right. But also, uh, Christmas- Well, we were busier. Right. People had stuff to do. That's like inventing electricity. But then they had their evenings off due to lack of light. Do you know anything about hot cockles? Hot cockles is not for <laughs> contemporary life. Okay. So one person is blindfolded, there are a bunch of people in a room, and then one of the people who isn't blindfolded hits the person <laughs> who is blindfolded, and then the blindfolded person has to guess who hit them. So if you want to be sneaky about it, you're like, Oh, that was Sarah! That was definitely that was Sarah. Sarah. For some reason associated almost exclusively with Christmas. And why is it hot and cockley? Why don't you do one? John, did you know that Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was invented by the Woolworth Company? I did not know that because it's not true. <laughs> It was Montgomery Ward. Ah! Maybe I should do the facts. <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was invented in the late 1930s by the Montgomery Ward department store. <laughs> they had one of their copywriters, a guy named Robert Mays, write a Christmas story. And because he was like a nerdy, wimpy, small guy, he decided to write a Christmas story about a nerdy, wimpy, small reindeer named Rudolph. And then the story just became massive. Because everybody loves a nerdy reindeer. If you're gonna have a reindeer, you want a nerdy one. In Canada, what is Santa's postal code? I don't know, what what do Canadian postal codes look like? Letter, number, letter, number, letter, number. Is it leet speak? It is leet speak. Is it H0, H0, yes! H0? Yes! H0, H0, H0. <laughs> okay, I got one. Jingle bells? Yes. You know how that goes? Jingle bells, Batman smells, <laughs> yeah, that Robin one. laid an egg. Before it was about Batman, it was about what? Christmas. Thanksgiving. No way, really? It's a Thanksgiving song, which is why it has no references to Christmas in it. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm gonna check that. I'm gonna... Fact check! Wow, wrote it in 1857 for a Thanksgiving program. James Lloyd, Lord Pierpont, best known for composing Jingle Bells, but, I mean, to be fair, he should be famous for that beard. <laughs> Alright, Hank, here's the last Christmas fact for you. Do you know all of the words to the Jingle Bells Batman Smells song? I think I do. Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, Robin laid an egg, the Batmobile lost a wheel and Joker got away. Hey! hey! Happy, Happy Holidays! holidays. Puff fight. Ow. Puff, puff fight. fight. Ow. <laughs> My puff is stronger than your puff. Hey, I want, I've got an idea. What's your idea? I want you to say good morning, John, and then I'll be like, good morning. Okay, that's, I, we've had that idea before. I know, it's still funny though. Good morning, John. Good morning. Ah, we're together. There on the dance floor and I don't know how to reach her Now heterosexuality's not my defining feature They said skinny jeans and cardigans were the only way to go But now it seems that Oxfam employees are not the ones who know just how it works Give me a minute while I fiddle with my hair You think you're telling me that it looks fine but I'm the one who cares About a good impression being made Cause I'm the one who might get laid Don't tell me how the game is played Don't tell me how the game is played I don't want to talk to her and take her hand In case she tells me her favourite band is not my favourite 
band And how do I know which drink she'd want me to buy When do I look her in the eye When did the indie music scene become so overfussed With social inadequacy being such a must Don't knock me to the ground if I'm already falling It'll only make things worse, you know I always do my calling With the sage this evening's filling me with rage I only wish I had some sage advice to give to me The Indie Handbook Volume 3 would reach Oh girls, you fancy them by getting with their boyfriends Replace your party loving mates with awkward greasy boyfriends Who like listening to Sonic Youth You always must appear aloof Remember no amount of faking Will make your indie band groundbreaking Oh! Don't think you're special or much less of a disgrace Just because you got yourself a lady who plays bass Don't bother finding somebody to play disc and recorder Yeah, that's not gonna put you back in working order You haven't got a different sound You aren't part of the underground You haven't been together long So try to write some bloody decent songs The girl's outside now talking to a taxi driver If she were coming home with me alone It cost a fiver to my door I talked to her but I am sure she must have heard it all before From guys though I could cry That's probably the reason why she's dressed just like a lesbian I hear it's quite a craze You hardly move in pubs for all the lesbians these days are But it hardly matters if she's gay It's time to move on anyway I'll see you guys at half past ten tomorrow evening I wouldn't do that for a thousand dollars. I don't think I would enjoy that either. Punishment! That's a little too high. No, that's not a funny punishment. Punishment will make you to the frog hopper. You'll pee all over the place. I literally wouldn't do that for a thousand dollars. I might not do it for ten thousand dollars. I don't want to do that at all. Oh, good morning, Hank. Good morning, John. It's Wednesday, I think. We're in Westport, Connecticut. We just got to the hotel and we are unpacking all of the current Nerd Fighter gifts. Including an extra large world's best grandma shirt. Perfect size for John Green. Well, I don't know if you remember the book, but in the book it's too big. So it makes oh. sense that it would be too big. But thanks for pointing out that I'm fat. Cows. The Great American Tour to Nerd Fighting. Music. Eco geeking and nerd fighting. Hank's passions. Mm -hmm. Culver Creek shirt. Culver Creek. Preparatory school from looking for Alaska. Just like Willie, he takes two steps, barks for ten minutes, and then takes two more steps. The barking is insane. <laughs> Someone got us three whole catfish wraps separately, some Veet, a six pack of Mountain Dew, a dozen tulips, a bottle of water, a box of tissues, and a can of blue spray paint. Paper Towns Tour 11 11 08. Oh, peeps! Oh, peeps! Peeps! Oh, peeps! Fancy that! Oh, yeah. Amish printer bread. Amish hunger wonder bread. Amish hunger wonder bread. It looks like this. I'm gonna taste it. Mmm. Amishy. Puppy sized elephant piggy bank. Don't put too much of your money in there. It's just like the American economy. Oh, what empty. Mr. Kingdom's The Crumbling Towers in your pants. Team zombie. Because I prefer the hard truths of zombies to the easy lies of unicorns. Puppy sized elephants, rainbows. It's all Velcro so you can take it off and put other stuff on too. Yeah. God, I love rainbows. Nerd duck! It reminds me of Zay. Yeah, yeah it does definitely sure. remind me of Zay. It says that I'm the chairman of awesome. Chairman? Chairman. It's a special Christmas ornament for Willie. Oh, that's cute. It's Willie. Look. Nerdy's cereal! And then on the back, some Shakespearean insults. Thou mangled hedge-born punk. This person says, Nerdy's is also a great thing to put on your head. I went to finishing school and I learned how to do this. That's what you learned in finishing school? I certainly didn't learn how to dance because no one would dance with me at, at Crown School for dancing. The only semi-autobiographical thing in Paper Towns. I love these. Scrunch! Scrunch. Is that a Fresno lens? It is. It's That's awesome. Lens. Really good for focusing sunlight on ants. Also on solar panels. Oh, really? It's very confusing. Okay, well, wow. that's it. I haven't gathered anything in the last several How do I look? Yeah. Other than awesome, I mean. Fun housey. Great white wall of cow. <laughs> that's hilarious. Wouldn't that be great if, if <laughs> yeah. the Wonka company would recognize how much more awesome nerds would be if they called them fighting nerds? Oh, it's a go-fast bar! <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna eat it. 
Oh, I want to eat it. Sorry, you can have some Amish Hunger Wonder bread. It's delicious too. And look, Hank, it's Bubbles the nerd fighting puppy. That's like an exact replica of his cast. He's a cute little guy. It's almost life size. I miss you, Willie. Who's gonna pee on the floors in the hotel room? Without you. Just me. It all falls to me. <laughs> I have to make the mess and clean it up. When you're around, you can do the peeing on the floor for me. <laughs> I do miss him, man. It's crazy. When the stuff that you imagine becomes real, it is very gratifying. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Party blower solo. Good morning, Hank. You're in the hotel room right next to me, so I should probably just say good morning, nerd fighters, and welcome to a day in our life on tour. First, the iPhone alarm clock goes off at some ungodly hour in the morning. Then I brush my teeth while trying to answer questions about my hair, such as, how did that happen? Then I meet up with Hank and the Catherine in the hallway. Good morning, mister. Talking about fun house. Oh yeah. Cheetah time. <laughs> Library elevator. The mouse is hungry for knowledge. Time to load up the minivan. And then we drive. While our friend Ellen tells us how to get where we're going. Go ah! <laughs> oh, traffic. <laughs> You're so fun to get stuck in. Sometimes I strain to appreciate natural beauty while cars drive past. Look, natural beauty. Truck. Stupid truck. Stupid crane. I'm trying to appreciate natural beauty. Then I live broadcast myself on blogtv.com while inside the minivan due to Hank's miraculous contraption. Hello, me. How are you doing? I can see my eyes in my eyes. And then we'll just be having a perfectly polite conversation and Catherine will be like, have you guys ever wondered about cows? <laughs> She's so good at cows. They come out of nowhere, you gotta be ready. And finally we arrive in Pittsburgh, whereupon I begin to contemplate how I will pwn Maureen Johnson. Hey Maureen. Hey. Why are we mortal enemies? Because everywhere you go, John, you cross my name out of Let It Snow and you sign my book. Can't we just, um, like, have a truce? I suppose we could. I mean, I'm sure that there are some... All right. Oh. oh. Hi! Wow. But really, wouldn't you worry? I mean, we've been dating for five weeks and he's never taken me to his house. Now give me my poker to the hell Cause I need a <laughs> Then late at night we get to a hotel, I go to bed, and then I wake up early the next morning and do it all again. It would be tiring if nerd fighters weren't so incredibly awesome, and also if I didn't keep getting amazing shirts like this Culver Creek t-shirt complete with a swan. Nerd fighters, I look forward to seeing many of you in Kansas City and St. Paul. Hank, I'll see you in the morning. And so it begins, the Great American Tour to Nerd Fighting 2008, featuring Hank, John, the Catherine, and the minivan! Morning, Hank, it's Monday, and I am driving a minivan through the great state of Missouri. I am, in fact, driving the exact same minivan that Q's mom owns in Paper Towns, which is one of the reasons that we picked it for the Great American Tour to Nerd Fighting 2008. By the way, when I say good morning, Hank, I mean it. Good morning, Hank. Good morning, John. Thanks for filming my vlog for me today. I'm gonna edit it too, so you sound like an idiot. <laughs> 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 we are driving right now on our way to a Nerdfighter gathering in St. Louis. Yesterday we were in both Plano, Texas and Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Both those gatherings were awesome. And we announced the release of Hank's 
first studio album, So Jokes. Cue the music. It's too hot, it's too hot in here. I need Harry Potter, like the crazy love needs water. I want a bouquet. Oh, Helen Hunt, Helen Hunt, you make my heart do acrobatic stunts. We listened to the whole thing yesterday. It's just amazing. It's only for sale on the tour to nerdfighting. Sorry if you're not coming to a nerdfighter gathering, but if you are, you gotta pick up a CD. They cost $15, and no, we cannot take credit cards. Also in Plano, Texas, we met Sean Ahmed, the guy from Bangladesh who has been working with Save the Children to make the world suck less through our money. And we'll be collecting money for Save the Children Bangladesh throughout the entire tour. You guys wanna hear something crazy? So a guy comes up to me at the nerdfighter gathering in Oklahoma City, and he says, I have a copy of Looking for Alaska that is unlike any other copy of Looking for Alaska in the world. And I was like, oh yeah, sure, whatever. He held it out. It was half eaten. And he said, this copy of Looking for Alaska was half eaten by a Hawaiian mongoose. And I was like, okay, full points. I totally believe him because he looked like the kind of guy who did professionally wrestle Hawaiian mongooses. <laughs> it's been a lot of sitting in the car with Catherine and Hank. Although that's been a lot of fun. Uh, Catherine and Hank are excellent company in a minivan. We miss the Yeti, but we do keep her right here. Hello, Yeti. I'm coming home to you tomorrow for the Election Day Spectacular in Greenwood, Indiana. After that, we will be in Louisville, Kentucky, then we'll be in Knoxville, Tennessee, and then we'll be in Gadsden, Alabama. The spiraling shape will make you go insane. That's the best part of being on a road trip with me. John gets to sing. Then he drives over the rumble strip. Rumble strips, rumble strips, rumble strips are my favorite part of driving. I love the sound of a rumble strip. It makes my butt vibrate. I know, but that's good. You gotta get the deep vein thrombosis out. I love you, Missouri! No. Dang it! Catherine and I have this friendly competition about who is going to spot cows first, and she's up like 888 million to one. I think we should like quit writing and eco geek and just do this full time. <laughs> Buy a minivan, travel around the country, meet nerd fighters, spew carbon. Dang it! How to where? Oh, cows! In the distance. <laughs> They're like three miles away. <laughs> nerd fighters make me believe in America again. Why don't you close out the vlog, Hank? Hank, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> P.S. There's a tour to nerd fighting Twitter stream, which will be constantly broadcasting updates from the road. I have this extraordinarily exciting device here, which lets me be on the internet even when I'm in a minivan. Damn it, cows! <laughs> I am so bad at cows! And John and I will be broadcasting all of the nerd fighter gatherings on Blog TV. There's a link in the sidebar for both the Twitter and the Blog TV. Link in the oh, horses! It was not cows. <laughs> I thought I had it, but it was horses. Good morning, Hank. It's Thursday. Good morning, John. That's the big surprise. That's the big surprise! It's still us! It's still the two of us! Just kidding, there's another surprise. Well, I think a good surprise is that we're doing a video together. Yeah, actually, so it's not really good morning, Hank. Good morning, John. It's more... Good, good morning, morning, nerd fighters! fighters. That was completely... Yes! That was completely not... We're on fire! We didn't even improvised. script that! That was so improvised. Today's video comes in two parts. First, we are going to answer some frequently asked questions. And secondly, we are going to talk about the exciting secret project. Hank, I can't tell the two of you apart. Which one is which? I'm John. I'm Hank. And I'm the Yeti. Why do they call her the Yeti, John? It's because she's so hairy, Hank. She is so hairy. Oh my god, it's amazing. Oh. It's all over her face. I would hate, like, to clean your drains. Why is there an eye missing in communication in the animated intro? Uh, it's because there is no eye in Brotherhood. But why is there no I in communication? Um, because there's no I in shut the f up. I want to become a nerd fighter. How do you become a nerd fighter? Uh, if you want to become a nerd fighter, you probably already are a nerd fighter. Technically, you should go to brotherhood2.com and write a song, but in all likelihood, you, my friend, are a nerd fighter. And like three months ago, that would have sucked. But now, it's awesome somehow. How do you become a secret sibling? To become a secret sibling, all you have to do is make a video response to one of our videos on YouTube. Preferably several responses. In a row. Every day. Remember like in January you guys said that you were going to make a Happy Dance compilation? Yeah. Whatever happened to that? Uh, we didn't do it. Uh -huh. Um, I don't know if you've noticed this, Hank, but there's like 70 million abandoned Brotherhood 2.0 projects along the way. I mean, 
Question Tuesdays. Question Tuesdays. Question Tuesdays didn't even have a second appearance. No, it's just the one question. The giving away of my tote bags. But there is another answer to this question, and that brings us to the exciting secret project which is about not to be secret anymore. Notice how I didn't split the infinitive. John and I are asking the nerd fighters to help us create the Happy Dance Project. Hank and I were sitting around the other day and we said to each other, you know what would be more awesome than if we made a Happy Dance compilation video? If all of the nerd fighters sent us their happy dances, dancing in front of their awesome places in their towns and neighborhoods, and then we made a happy dance compilation video using all nerd fighter happy dances. Because you know that nerd fighters have a lot of crazy happy dances. I mean, we've seen some happy dances in some secret sibling videos. And crazy happy dances. I mean, these videos are so crazy and sexy and cool, they could be a TLC album. Word. <laughs> Excellent use of word. Some quick rules about the Happy Dance videos we hope you'll send us. Please make them about 10 seconds long, not too much longer because otherwise our computers will explode. Also, please send them to sparksflyup at gmail.com. You probably need a deadline. I know you people, you like to procrastinate. October 1st! October 1st! At the very latest. But if you have your Halloween costumes already, put them on. It would be great if everyone could organize to make sure that there's a happy dance in front of, like, the seven major wo wonders of the world. So if we could have someone hit the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, that would be very helpful. Because, uh, we are gonna have a tough time getting to Babylon. You might have wanted to choose one of the major wonders of the world that still exists. Get to the pyramids! Oh, by the way, if you're new to this and wondering what a happy dance is, it's the dance that you do when you're incredibly happy. Here's two examples. See, that was way less than 10 seconds. <laughs> Nerd fighters! <laughs> That's how we roll! Good morning, John. It's Monday, June 11th. Good morning, Hank. Yes! Show me that smile again. Ooh, show me that smile Don't waste another minute on your crying We're nowhere near the end We're nowhere near the best is ready to begin Oh, as long as we got each other We got the world spinning doing Hank? Um, laying on the beach in, of all places, the Dominican Republic uh, at a family reunion. And what's the most exciting part of the family reunion so far? <laughs> the, the, the reunion of the brotherhood, John. <laughs> Why don't we do it like this every day? Where's Catherine? She's stuck in Montana at work, which really sucks. Well, it would suck, except that I she's doing it. weed research. Well, yeah, I guess it's nice that she has a job. But it's very sad that she isn't here, even though you have a Yeti. Wave hi to Catherine. Hi, Catherine. We miss you, Catherine. We miss you. John, I will see you in a couple of minutes. In the great tradition of Brotherhood 2.0 special features, here are some outtakes. Good morning, John. Uh, it's Monday, June 11th. <laughs> <laughs> we made a lot of money, got a master's degree. Are you- What happened? I did a testicle flop. <laughs> you gotta be the first person to ever drown in testicle pain. <laughs> Fuck. I'm sorry, I'm- I thought I would- I thought I'm I in a fetal position, you can't <laughs> pants me. kinda of burned my eye. That's very good! Wow!